Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lorelai Shimayo. This is our Me We Awakening panel for energizing body, mind, heart, and soul. We have events throughout the Northwest and online, lots of events online, and hopefully in person again soon. In our panel, we have, I think, let's see, six practitioners today will be answering your questions. You're, it's free to be here to listen and learn from all that's shared. Um, a small price sliding scale to ask a question of the panel. It's 16 to $24 and $10 for BIPOC folks. Um, we're going to go through and introduce ourselves um, and allow you to know who we are and what we do. And then we'll go through and talk about the theme and then we'll be taking your questions. Yeah, I'll share a little, a little bit more and kind of hold the container, set the container before we start answering questions. And yeah, just keep in mind that this is recorded and it will be posted up online. And we're really excited to be here with you on this really big, important topic. All right. Well, let's see. So how about let's have... Um, Shift which share and then Henry and then Lori. And um, go ahead and take a couple of minutes of um, letting us know about you. And yeah, we'll talk about the theme afterwards. So you can mention it, but but know you'll have more time afterwards. Thank you, Orla. Hi, I am the Shift Witch. I help you make shifts so radical, they must be magical. I do so through intentional movement, belly dance, and yoga being the two main movement forms that I like to move you through to help release different blockages and get the energy flowing through your body. I really um, pay a lot of attention to the chakras and how those are blocked and if they are blocked and really tailor the movements that we do to move around those specific areas to help you move that energy through. And I also do energetic healing. So you get to relax and I just sort of unblock things that are inside of you that maybe are a little more stuck than you're capable of doing alone. Because sometimes the bigger a trauma is or the older it is, especially something from a former lifetime, it can be a little hard to get moved out of the way on your own. And so I help you, I help facilitate that movement so that between the two of us, we can work together and get things flowing again. The reason you want to get things flowing again is you want to move forward on your path. Our purpose in being here is to fulfill whatever mission we chose when we decided to embody on this planet at this time. So we want to make sure that we are at our peak ability to do so. And at this time of year, we are moving into shadow season, which is where we deal with a lot of these different traumas from our past, whether that be our own past or our previous life. And so this is really great timing for, to have this panel so that we can look at all of that shadow part of ourselves, integrate it, release what no longer serves us, and be stronger at the other end to move forward and really intentionally create the life that we do want to be moving through on this planet. So I'm so glad you're joining us here tonight. I really look forward to supporting you in whatever way that I can. And I know that all the other panelists are here for you to know that this is a safe space for you to get the healing that you need right now. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much, Shift Witch. Henry. All right. So welcome to everyone. I'm looking here at the screen and I see the names and some some pictures and it's just wonderful and uh, so uh, I am trained as a life coach and uh, also uh, the amazing Gaia Hawken taught initiated me into the tarot more than just taught initiated me into the tarot and changed my life um, with uh, life coaching it's very psychological and action oriented and there's also magic like shift, shift which is mentioning and so I love using the tarot um, 
to to access things in a more metaphysical, spiritual way. And people usually come to me uh, when their life is off the rails in some way, or they've scared themselves, like one person coming to me, they were afraid they were going to get fired because they couldn't make their work work. Somebody else saying they're afraid they're going to quit their amazing job because they're so burned out. So this is when people usually come to me and I work with them to create a context and practices and tools that help them regain their balance and that help them ground themselves and that help them adjust their life in a way that really is in alignment with their divine self. So that's the work I do. And I can't wait to talk about today's subject. Thanks so much, Henry. All right, Lori is next. Hi. Oh, my picture is um. Frozen. Oh, yeah, you might be frozen. Just um, turn the video off and back on and it might come right back up. Will it turn off? It's not turning off. I know. Let's see. I'll see if I can turn it off and then we'll... We can hear you well, so that's at least good. Oh, you want to? You want? I'll go on to someone else, and then we'll see if we can get it sorted. All right, go ahead, Sandra. Want me to just talk then? Oh, here's frozen. I know we can hear you really well. So, do you want to just share right now? I can't tell if you can hear me. All right, Sandra. I think go ahead. I'm going to write Lori. Okay, I'm Sandra Jeffs. Um, I'm trained in a lot of different modalities and I've combined them into a really holistic practice. My aim is always to empower people to be able to work with the hard things that it's difficult to do on your own, but give you the tools to continue with that work on your own. I'm an abuse survivor of, uh, you know, mental, emotional, uh, verbal, sexual, <laughs> and physical abuse. And so my journey brought me to a place where I use my gifts a lot with abuse survivors and trauma survivors to assist them to go to find their balance and find their new norm so that they can move on with their life. Um, but I use the whole spectrum of, of the energy that we have in our homes, in our offices, in our environment, and as well as raising our own vibration, ener vibrational energy out of just survival, fear, and anger, and into uh, empowerment and joy and love. So that's me, Sandra Jeffs. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sandra. Gaia? My name is Gaia, and uh, it's a chosen name because I was actually named after two women who had incredibly short and unhappy lives due to the way that people treated women back in the early 1900s. I have been the survivor, I am the survivor, of both a date and domestic rape. Uh, back in the day when those were not even crimes. Uh, in one case, uh, you were just a slut for going out. It was all your fault. If you weren't teasing men uh, and being so cute, life would be uh, different for you. And then the other one, a husband, after all, had his rights. Uh, it took a long time for me to sort through what society had trained me. And one of the things that I used to get through this was the tarot. Another one was uh, NLP. And I especially discovered a form of uh, neuro-linguistic programming where one goes back into one's past and even one's past life and heals the situation, heals the others who were in the situation with one and then heals the future as well. And uh, that has had some very interesting positive effects on family members and children of people who've been healed because they get healed too. So it's a great deal of fun to be on that journey. And uh, the biggest word I think I can bring for us is that as a group, we stand to show that you can not only survive, but you can thrive. 
And that's what's important. And we're here to help people thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Gaia. So going back and forth with Lori, let's see, Lori, if we can hear you well right now. Can you hear me? We can hear you well. So maybe after you introduce yourself, we'll have you reboot your, your, modem, your modem. Okay, your I'll room. run and do that after. Okay, my name is Lori and I'm from Angelic Guidance, Lori's Angelic Guidance and Intuitive Healing. I'm a Reiki master, a Seraphim Blueprint healer and a Theta practitioner. I dive deep in, in when I do my healings and um, a lot of times it's inner child work, or trauma, trauma, trauma based work and things like that. So this is not new to me. It's something I do very often. And I usually provide a very safe, safe pace for people to do their healing in there. And then you can't move forward until you have dealt with your trauma and your inner child work. So I look forward to being on tonight's panel. I welcome sorry for the inconvenience of what's going on here, technical difficulties. Um, thank you. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, so I left you some notes in the chat about um, maybe give that a try and come back in in a few minutes and hopefully that'll work and we'll be able to see you and hear you really well. And I'm Lorelai Shimayo. I'm an intuitive eye reader and a body psychology coach. I do a mixture of life leadership and love coaching, matchmaking. Um, I sometimes call my work emotional energy healing. The body psychology work is really helping us get more um, in present in our bodies, aware of our bodies, aware of the messages that our body is giving us, feeling all kinds of feelings, including anger being one of those feelings, feeling healthy sexual energy, one of those feelings um, related to the theme that we'll talk about more. Um, I read your eyes to help you understand your soul and your soul path, your purpose, and Different souls have different journeys with all the topics, um, including the topics of today's panel too. So your eyes also matter in how you engage these lessons. Um, yeah, I, I love working with people with all kinds of things, just understanding themselves and their journey, really loving themselves for the journey that they've been on and um, embracing all that's happened um, and connecting to their power and being able to move forward in a powerful way, whatever that topic is, be it life purpose and career paths, relationships they're in, relationships they want to be in, um, all sorts of different things. Um, yeah, passionate about uh, doing this work with, with each other and community um, and thrilled to be with you today, helping run the panel and being on the panel. All right. Well, yeah, so Lori popped out and hopefully we'll be able to come back in with a great internet. Let's talk a bit about the theme today, reclaiming our power over harassment, sexism, and abuse, whatever order I'm putting those, yeah, those three topics, um, symbols of just all kinds of oppression that we, that we face. All right. Well, so yeah, practitioners, let's jump in and share a bit about that too. We can start off in the same order. And uh, if we want to popcorn and go in a different order, I'm great with that too. Shift Witch, did you want to jump in? Absolutely. Yeah. So I was drawn to be on the panel because I am um, a sexual abuse survivor from a very, very young age. And unfortunately, a great deal of emotional abuse as well, some physical abuse and definitely some harassment and sexism, which is still unfortunately very prevalent in our society right now. I discovered that nature helped me cope with all of this trauma that I was dealing with. I would very often just climb up a tree as a child and sit at the top and feel the tree swaying back and forth and look out at the world around me to try to really understand my place in it and how I could be safe even at the top of a swaying tree <laughs> with the things that were happening in the place I should have been safe which was in my home and this is also how I discovered my magic my connection that was even deeper to the earth it wasn't just healing me I could move that energy I could use it to help others who were dealing with the same thing I was and you know I obviously learned that more as I got older some of it I did intuitively as a child and it became a more intentional thing that I was able to do as I got older and all of these things sort of combined to help me understand who I really was and my worth in the world and that no matter what happened even you know still dealing with harassment and sexism on a, 
a daily basis if you have an outside job. Um, unfortunately, common still. Knowing your own worth and being really solid in who you are and your self-care and self-love practices can absolutely help just negate those things that are trying to come into your field. And so that is where I spend a lot of my energetic time and teachings is boundary setting, how to create that safe space within yourself so that you don't have to go outside for it and how to not ignore what is happening, but acknowledge and release it. So that's where I'm coming from for this panel for tonight. Thanks so much, Shift Witch. Shift Witch. Aunt Tongue Twister was saying your name. <laughs> I love it. Henry. So this topic is um, really powerful for me because I would say that uh, until the mid 80s, I honestly, to honest to goodness, was a real man hater. I hated men with venom with a level of hostility that was poisoning my life and I transformed that because not because I thought men deserved it but because I deserved to live without this hate I was in show business um, I was making records with what is now Sony Germany and so you can imagine I, I entered that when I was 14 and uh, the amount of harassment that I experienced and uh, inappropriate touching and propositions. And my producer literally saying to me, I'm not gonna support the record I'm producing for you unless you let me you know, do what I wanna do with you. And me running from the house and running down the street. you know, And then indeed him not, not um, supporting the record. You know, he was a very famous producer. He's the head of one of the largest uh, show business organizations in the world, th the head of that, and just what a horrible person. So I, I felt such hatred. And this, this harassment, you know, we all have that. It's happening all of the time. So I was incredibly blessed not to be um, sexually violated in, with sexual violence because my mom was. So she was not as blessed. It was in her family and it was in the extended family and was in the village. And so she watched me like a hawk. No one got to hold me. No one got to touch me. So, you know, there's a certain price to pay for that. But I am willing. I'm so glad to pay that price. So I really understand how destructive this is for people. And I found that psychology goes a, a certain way to understanding, to recontextualizing, to find some ways to dealing with that. But I've also found that energetic work is uh, like a whole other level. So what I do with people is going through breathing and through visualizations and through love, like, how, like applied love, not love as just a feeling, but love as a tool in the bell hooks way where bell hooks is talking about that love is an action so i use that very much to help people heal to just send love through their body in a very specifically guided way and so i'm looking forward to uh, working with all of us tonight it's just such a privilege and honor to be here and just wow you know connect with all of us thank you thank you henry sandra yes i am also feel honored and privileged to be here and to share with all of you um, and my own journey I was already on a spiritual path before I fully realized how much abuse I had experienced in my life and through my marriage etc and so I used those tools on myself to to heal and um, as an energetic uh, healer as an empath uh, what I have discovered in my research and in working with hundreds of people at this point is that when you've had severe trauma, um, particularly sexual or, or, or any uh, abuse 
form, you end up shutting down your heart and putting walls around it. You end up shoot, shutting down your power center, your solar plexus. You really shut down in your creative centers, your, your uh, sacral and your root chakra, which is what is safety is about, is the root grounding. And so when you continue and try to uh, advance in your life going forward, it's like you've got two steps forward and something on your ankles dragging you back. And it makes it really difficult to achieve your dreams and to step into your the wholeness of your purpose, your life purpose. Um, so I work, uh, I work with energy. There's an acronym L dot O dot V dot E, and it stands for level of energetic, excuse me, letter level of vibrational energy. And when you step into the divine love, as well as you're raising your energetic level, you're able to bring yourself out of um, of the lower energy fields where you're in survival, you're in fear, you're in anger, you're in judgment, you're in guilt, all of those things keep your energy vibration low. So it allows you to, um, to move up to where the healing can happen. And that's really critical to happen. The research that I've done on, on um, abuse of all kinds is that four out of five people, that's 80% have experienced some kind of abuse in their lifetimes. And sometimes it's really heavy, sometimes it's light, but at least 80% have experienced some kind of abuse. Um, and not very many people have done the work to heal that. So I work with music, I work with movement, I work with breath, I work with energy healing. I'm also NLP certified, Theta certified. I'm a master feng shui. I work with raising the vibration level of your home. If you're working with me more than just an hour to really have a holistic uh, raising of your energy so that you can uh, perform in, at your very best and deal with life uh, with love and joy and happiness. So I look forward to working with anyone and talking about it more. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sandra. All right, Lori, see we got your video on and see if we can hear you all now. Lori, did you want to go? It'd be like two minutes talking about the theme is what we're on. Okay, so tonight's theme is very important. I mean, it affects a lot of people, as Sandra said. And um, I, I do very deep work on that work with Beta, as well as Sarah from Blueprint and um, Reiki. And also in the process of devising my own modality. And uh, I find that once we clear our traumas and the things that held us back that aren't our true stories, there would, would have been projected onto us in our lives and we can truly be ourselves then that's when we start to thrive and that's when we start to move forward in our own in our own lives but we need to let go of that baggage and sometimes it's also attached to ancestors and past lives so sometimes we need to go a little bit deeper and release all that as well and then then you really feel a clearing not only for yourself but for your family members, because it heals the people before you and the people ahead of you. So that's the kind of work that I do with this stuff, and I take it very seriously, and I look forward to helping anyone that we can tonight. Thanks so much, Lori. All right, Gaia. <clears throat> so there I was, uh, four years old, starting first grade, and I realized that looking at all of the barbarians with whom I was about to become imprisoned, I could read like their minds. I could tell what their pains were. And it was pretty overwhelming. It would be a number of years before I would be lucky enough to have a person from Haiti come and show me how to turn off other people's pain. 
because I had plenty of my own. If I were to be honest, I would have to say that I envy those folks who could go out into the woods and sit in trees and be under bushes. I lived in an intensely uh, urban environment and that was just not one of my choices. And so my brain dealt with it in, in two kind of interesting ways. Uh, in one way, I became um, like the little match girl. Life went on outside of me. I could see other people doing things. I could imitate what they were doing so that as best I could, I looked like them. But I was, uh, I was never one of them. Always the glass wall was between me and those other people. The other book that kind of I could relate to was Jerzy Kozinski's book, The Painted Bird. From the instant I started mixing with other people, I was so much not them. I was definitely the outsider who could be uh, blamed for anything, uh, manipulated in any way, uh, certainly looked down on and people could project their fear of failure on onto me. Uh, I was very, very, very lucky. I found a person who could help me turn off my intuitive streak to have it be just something that I used. I found neurological um, linguistic programming and found a way of reprogramming my mind and how I accepted information and what I did with it once I did. And of course, I always had the tarot because my grandmother taught me that when I was a very small child. I can't imagine what it would be like to be listening to this wonderful panel and be wanting to ask questions because obviously the people here are open-hearted, open-minded and incredibly talented. And so I'm very excited about seeing where we're going to be going once we roll. Thank you so much, Gaia. I'm gonna time myself and see if I can get in some history here pretty quickly. So I was raised with my parents and my, my grandmother and my brother. My brother's younger. And so it turns out I realize now that my grandmother must have been on the narcissistic continuum. I've had tons of lessons in my life with narcissism, with other people that have shown up in my life, lots of clients that have experiences with people with narcissism. And my mom definitely had bipolar, and I don't know what her other diagnoses were. So I grew up around that and um, a lot of unhealthiness. I don't know. I have the paradox of not knowing intellectually of what all my sexual trauma is. I have that paradox of needing to embrace it and accept it and claim it as though it is me, whether it happened to me, whether or not it was this life or some other life or something else that I'm connecting with, because denying this truth only leaves me in like an energetic stir inside, even though I only remember some parts of it. I think I probably was abused by my uncle, my mother's sister's husband, and a group of people. Um, my, uh, my uncle when I was very young and a group of people when I was under 10 and then um, by my pediatrician from about the time I was 10 to 17. And that I remember. And I feel angry talking about it. I know I was teased by other kids. Um, I don't know that I call fully that I was bullied, but I wonder if I'm slightly on the autism spectrum and I just know ways I didn't fit in socially and then having all this trauma as well. So definitely got teased and didn't fit in and had that sort of experience. Oh, and then when I'm an adult, so when I was in um, grad school, for example, and I decided to quit grad school during my fourth year, I had my advisor might write recommendations and I, I opened one of them years later. And it turned out that he wrote that, um, don't hire me, I would only follow my husband. Furious. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then when I was working later after grad school, um, I remember after working for about a year, year and a half and talking with my supervisor of why was this person like my supervisor? They were hardly doing any work and not doing good work and not working very hard. And like, why could I not get a raise? Um, I eventually got a raise, but still not anywhere near what that person was earning. And I was told that that person um, had a spouse and kids. And um, so they deserved to earn more. So this is all during the 90s. I know this all has been typical for so long. Oh, goodness. So 
I didn't start working with people until later in my life. I was interested in psychology and didn't follow my path. I followed my grandmother's path and was a biologist um, for a long time and worked in the legal field for a bit. And I've even explored a little bit of what I might do in terms of supporting other people to not be um, hurt by my pediatrician. And I went back and looked at my records and he's not practicing anymore. And I was advised just to keep quiet, right? I have my own legal risk for speaking out. So this is probably the first time that I've talked on video about having been abused by my pediatrician. I've written about it in um, quietly at times, but um, probably not on video yet. So when I started working with people, I started working with somatic psychotherapists, and this was super important for my own healing. So I worked with them for my own healing, as well as learning lots of tools for working with other people. I learned tools like Gestalt and psychodrama, um, super helpful for reenacting various things that happened in my past and having them happen differently, where I could experience fighting people off and rewriting my history. I think that all sorts of group work that we do with each other, where we actually get seen and connected with, with other people and we have healthy interactions, all of this is healing and rewriting old history. So I got really skillful at reading um, all sorts of things in people's bodies. I'm really good at pattern recognition. And so learning to feel feelings myself, I could then learn to recognize these patterns in other people. I'm really good at reading eyes as well and all sorts of things in eyes, but so much of it is body and body language also that I'm picking up. And I think for healing these things, healing our traumas, but that we've been through. So important to be able to feel our feelings fully of talking extra time. Any other practitioners too, please be free to jump in afterwards too. Just for example, I use a model of five types of feelings, mad, sad, glad, scared, and sexual. Sexual is also aliveness. And so often for those of us that have trauma, what we're needing to do is really open up the valves to fully feel mad, glad, and healthy sexual. Sometimes we actually overuse sexual in a way that hurts ourselves. And I did a version of reenacting my own traumas for part of my um, early adult life. And then also decreasing the ways that we get stuck in sad and scared. And I mentioned mad or anger. I think feeling healthy anger of yes and no is so important. That's the big part of reclaiming our power. It's aggression that isn't actually anger, that's scared and fear. So aggression is really fear and it's needing to loosen that and move through that so that we're not caught in fear. And there are ways I help people do that by shifting and moving their bodies and allowing us to really feel our anger, our value, our worth, that we did not deserve something, that we deserve to be protected. And that for me is what's so healing about all these things. So I'm doing that in a gentle way with wherever we are right now too. So that's a bit about me and my history and some of the tools that I bring to supporting people in all this work. Um, yeah, we've got a small panel today. Um, just I talk for a bit. Practitioners, if there's anything else you want to say about this theme, please go ahead and jump in. Lori, go ahead. And Henry, yeah, after that. I'll talk a little bit about my own uh, trauma background. I have a group on healing from narcissism because my mother was a narcissist. And then I as sued because that's all you know. I married a narcissist as well. And then in the last few years, I've done some really deep healing and realized that most of the people around me were narcissists to some degree. I mean, it is a spectrum but to some degree. So truly breaking free from that has been huge and it's been liberating and becoming who I am now. So it's been really, really good. Um, but I, we have to stop the inner, the inner dialogue of what other people project on us. I think that's the biggest thing we need to do is that's not our story, that's theirs. And whatever the other people think of us is not our business. And it's not our truth. And we don't have to live by that. And I think it's really healthy to do some some deep, deep work on, on people around us when we're children. Because there are some, everybody has some form of trauma, no matter what. Thank you. I'm going to jump in and say one thing before anyone else shares. So one thing that we have happens sometimes in our Zoom meetings is that we have violations, sexual violation in our Zoom meetings. We occasionally have Zoom bombers. And I'm somewhat sensitive about the, the topic today too. And so for example, I had someone that just joined that has a questionable name and I really don't know, is it a real person that wants to be here? And is it not? And how much am I overly sensitive right now because of the theme and have my own history stirred up? So I'm gonna play safe and I'm gonna write the person and see if I can get them to text me back and talk about why they wanna be here. I just wanna acknowledge like it happens daily sometimes and then old things get stirred up and sometimes we have- I'm a real person. Oh, no, it's someone that's in the waiting room that we don't know who it is yet. So yeah, thank you so much. I get that you're all real people here right now. Thank you. 
All right, Henry wanted to say something, then Guy might want to say something else. And that person actually disappeared. So it could be an indication we don't know. Yeah, I just want to let you know what I'm going to do next time if someone else comes and, and I wonder. All right, Henry and then Gaia and then Sandra. First of all, um, Lorelai, thank you so much for being so um, alert. I would maybe not use vigilant because I don't at all see you as somebody who is imagining that something bad's going to happen. You're way more positive than that. But you're really alert and you're aware and you are so committed to protecting the community that you call together. And that's just wonderful. So the thing that, that I wanted to say is when I work with people where, where um, abuse or especially when it's sexual abuse or harassment occurs, the language is a language of, um, I don't know uh, what you would call it, but I'll describe it. It's a language of taking the person who's doing it out of it. It's like when you're a writer, it's called passive language. So for instance, um, I was abused, right? No, I wasn't abused. The president of that organization tried to have sex with me, a really gross guy, disgusting guy who was like 50 years older than me. You know, that's what happened. So what I do with people is I put a, create a safe space and I do this with myself. I create a safe space where the truth can be told. And then very often, more often than not, we create a psychic protection. So a psychic protection perhaps could also be called a, a, a visualizing protection. Or um, so basically, we think only things that are as real as this pen that I take notes with, as real as this, this pen are active in our lives, but that's not true. Even when we're thinking something or we're visualizing something that can become a very real barrier for other people. I've done it and I've experienced it many times in my life. So I work with people to create this like identifying, well, who was it? It was someone, it was not the ethers. And the, how I see that is that this language is such, such passive language where the thing itself is not connected to the person who did it is, a, is a, a, a function of the patriarchy because it is almost always men who do this. And so they're still in charge and they're still oppressing and controlling. And so they are oppressing us into not naming them. And so there's tremendous power gotten back when we name. And then when we, cre when we create tailor-made protection, like against- My them. uncle and his friends are abusing me narcissistically. Yeah, we're sorry about that, Claire, and upset by that. And um, if you'd love to ask a question later, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear from you too. So thank you for blurting that out. Sometimes that's what has to happen, right? So this is this is a lot of the work I do around that. Where where it's like, no, you don't have to. You don't have to. Like like we're, we're taught in order to make our lives better, to own what has occurred in our lives, and that is powerful and that's true and that is valid. But there are also where it's where this has not a place. Sometimes you also have to name what it is or who it is that's causing something. Like, for example, I'm not unhappy because the world is warming up. I'm unhappy that there's so many people doing this kind of the kind of things that are damaging our planet. And I know who they are and I don't like them. And then I have to hold them in light. But I'm not going to just like hold them in light first and just pretend like I don't know who this is. Like it's not the, the CEO of, of a British Petrol or, or Dutch Shell. You know, hello, I see you. You're doing that. But then now in order to save myself from going into this deep abyss, I'm holding you in love and light because just being angry at you is not going to help the situation. It's not going to heal you. But if I hold you in love and light, it's a better chance that healing is possible. So that's an He's example. He's scared that I will become more successful than him and outcompete Clear. him. Clear. So he Clear. wants to abuse me and make himself right because he has too much money to be wrong. Claire, I'm, I feel, yeah, I, I notice I'm feeling sad as you're sharing. Just, I appreciate it. Please, if you could wait until after the panel finishes talking about this, and then we have a format. You've probably not been to our panels before. We have a format where you can pay to ask a question and share about more of your context and what's happening, and we'd love to answer your question. 
So I put so more the, information the in the guests, chat about that. The guests Claire, if you could join the Claire, meetup could, don't actually Claire, get to talk about Claire, their issues if you could please that just, they join for. Claire, if you could please hold on until after we finish um, sharing, I, I'd appreciate that very much. Would that be all right? Do we actually get to speak after you finish about our problems or we just join and listen to you the whole time? Yeah, you don't listen to us the whole time. We have a format whereby it's free to be here to listen and learn. And there's a sliding scale for asking a question of the panel. And then you can share about the context and what's happening. And we'll we'll bring our tools and, and use our tools to help provide healing and answer questions about what's happening for you. What about like all the people who join in the meetup? Do they get to talk about their you know, concerns and issues in their own life that you presently are talking about the topic? Well, and, and every panel is a little different. And so depending on how this panel unfolds, we might have some time where we can have a bit more of a group discussion. We just have a regular format that we use for our panels. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much. All right, Henry, go ahead. I, well, it's, uh, I was complete, actually. I was just finishing my last sentence. So I was saying that that this is an example of how I work with people. You know, claim the truth about it and then create um, spiritual work around it so that you don't have to be hard because that's the thing, like we shut down and we harden. And then yes, it protects and, and helps us deal with the things that violated us. But at the same time, all the love and all the beauty and all the, the, the gleam of magic can't get through either. And so, that's why spiritual work, as well as I'm not knocking psychological work, I think it's fantastic, but spiritual and spiritual work can make such a profound difference. And that, that was, that's what I wanted to say on the topic. Let's claim it, let's claim who it was. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. And then, and I should say, Claire and everyone too, it's a smaller group today. Um, no one has prepaid for a question. We're taking a little bit more time to talk about the topic before we dive in. If you do want to ask a question of the panel, we request that you pay first and then let us know in the chat that you've that you've paid and yet you're ready. And um, we want to get you in line. And um, yeah, we have a few more practitioners that want to share a bit to more. To ask a question, yeah. you have to pay. We do. That's the format that we use for our panels is we have people pay to ask a question of the panel and it's free to be here to be part of the space and to learn from, from everyone asking. Yeah. How much is to ask something? Sure, it's, it's it's sixteen to twenty four dollars is the the sliding scale range that we ask for, and it's ten dollars for BIPOC folks. So we do a step towards making reparations and having a lower price for BIPOC folks. Um, sixteen yeah, so dollars for one question. It's you get to share about the the topic, the context of where you are, and then what your situation is, and what you would you would like to receive from the panel, and then usually everyone in the panel answers, so you get answers from all of us for that price. So it's usually it's a really really great value for the price. It does cost something. Well, so I'm happy to chat with you. Ask. Yeah, Claire, and can are you able to are you able to see the chat? I can chat with you back and forth about some of the specifics while more of the practitioners share. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna chat back. I'm gonna chat with you in just a moment. Go ahead, Gaia, and then we'll have Sandra. I think that one of the really serious problems that I get a chance to deal with are uh, blockages <clears throat> that people have put up in various parts of their body and in various parts of their spirit. And one of the trainings I have that has made me really happy is an ability to remove those blockages. Although sometimes I actually have to put them back on again because the person isn't really ready to have the blockage removed. Uh, it's a removing blockages, discovering who you were in a past life, and even discovering the crimes that have been committed against you by various forms of abuse and projection uh happen because uh you're open and the worst part is that other people don't even recognize that it's real they'll say things like you just imagine this uh it's all in your head nobody would ever think of that or do that or say that you're just misinterpreted so that you become the victim becomes the perpetrator. And that is a really sneaky form of abuse. 
and it's one that takes a while for us to uh, to get rid of. But sometimes we have a problem that appears to be popping out of us, and and that one is frequently um, a cover. And one of the great things about working with a panel with as many different modalities as we have is that you will be getting very different answers from each person. And one of them is bound to start opening the door for you. And that's uh, that makes me very excited to be part of a group that can help people really identify what the problem is so, so that they can uh, do something about it. Thanks, Gaia. And Sandra, did you have something else you wanted to share? Yeah, um, I found three main things that uh, that hinder us from the healing. And uh, when we have trauma and abuse, our energy, our energetic body has automatically been lowered. And so that keeps us stuck in those lower realms of uh, blame and shame and, and uh, frustration and anger and feeling stuck uh, we also have beliefs limiting beliefs and programming that no longer serve us that we've gotten so it's really important to discover as Gaia was saying what those limiting beliefs are and to be able to let go of them and to install a belief that is positive and empowering and that allows us to break down in the um, programming that we've received from the society that sees things you know as 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 it is still today with sexual harassment and um other things sexism being okay um i use an analogy a lot of times when i first start working with somebody of imagine that you had a serious illness and it incapacitated you for a while and you've overcome that you're out of that situation and what happens to your physical body is it's now weakened because you haven't been as active and moving and so your muscles your joints your bones all need to get moving again and find that strength and health that you had before you were dealing with the uh, severe illness the same thing happens or a similar thing happens with abuse when we've had abuse it kind of just stops us in our tracks we continue moving we continue striving trying learning things and going forward um but our energetic body are really stymied and shut down quite a bit so as you become aware of them, um, Henry talked about um, it is so important to speak the truth and to say what has happened. Um, and that's the beginning. Um, you know, when you become aware and you're able to speak it, there's a certain amount of safety that has to happen to be able to speak that truth. So it's finding groups where you can speak your truth safely. Many times I have people come to me and I'm working with them and they have friends and family that are supporting them. And it turns out that they're supporting them in a codependent way. In other words, allowing them to stay the victim and stay in that lower energy of being a victim rather than just listening to them and letting them speak their truth and then supporting them to do the work to move out of it so i encourage people if you if you're going to go to like a 12-step program not i'm not saying alcoholic but it's the same thing where you're allowed to just speak and speak your truth and not have anybody interrupt and then you're able to hear other people who may have something similar without trying to fix you, fix them. You're just listening and able to speak. And that begins to heal that safety that it's okay for you to speak the truth and move out of it. So I just wanted to put those things forward uh, as help for you to uh, on your journey to this healing. So. 
that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sandra. All right, practitioners, anything else before we, we open the floor to questions? Hmm. And just before we before we look at moving into questions too, I want to share that um, when if you're going to ask a, a question of the panel today, just keep in mind that we are recorded. You may ask a, a question and our answer, we may go deeper than you intend for us to go in this format, or we may talk about topics that you don't want us talking about in this format. That's fine. Please give us guidance from the beginning if you know of that, or just jump in and interrupt us and let us know if we're going in a direction you don't want us to go and then help us know how we can stay within what feels good to you as we answer your question. And we believe that you're all intuitive. You all probably pick up so much about this topic and this theme too. We request that you allow the attention to stay up in the panel today and the person that's paid to ask a question. And that if something comes through for you, you might want to consider writing it down. Often um, these messages are fleeting. And then if you want, if you have a message for the person that asked the question, please wait until we finished answering their question and then feel free to write them in private chat and ask them if they'd like to hear what came through you. Please honor whatever they share. If they, they don't want it for whatever reason, they might feel full after hearing all of our answers. Please, um, please honor that and trust that the answer came through you for a different reason. Thanks so much. All right. Well, we're available to, to answer questions. And if we don't have anyone wanting to pay to ask a question yet, we can also just talk about the topic more generally if someone has a more general topic um, they want us to address. Like, so for example, and Daniel just mentioned something. Yeah, 12 step process and found emotions anonymous. Oh, interesting, emotions anonymous, one of the most valuable and even life-saving paths. Yeah, interesting. Great, and maybe I want to acknowledge too, I think, um, I think Claire just left, she had left some messages in the chat. So um, just thanks everyone for holding space for Claire. Um, I offered some different options for her to go into a breakout room and talk and um, just some options if the, the price wasn't affordable today and just some, some other offerings of different things we have. So, so hopefully she's finding resources for whatever will support her. All right, yeah, let's see. Okay, well, let's see. So has anyone has anyone said they wanted to ask a question yet? I don't think so. But if anyone has and haven't noticed, please let me know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thanks so much for your support, everyone that's here too. I appreciate that support of me. All right. Yeah. yeah, and so and if, if you don't have a specific question at this time, if there are some more general questions about the topic or just something you want to share that might um, provoke some conversation, um, I'm happy to hear about that too while we're kind of gaining our container for um, yeah for someone to ask a question. And you can ask a question about other topics too. Do you know those of you that have been here before? It was just our theme for today. So chances are they might wander around the theme. They don't have to. Yeah, so I'm, and I, I recognize many of you too. If you want, you can unmute and, and add, bring up the general topic if you want to, as well as putting it in chat. Yeah. And then those practitioners too, if you think of a topic that we haven't addressed as much that would be good for us to kind of ping on a little bit, feel free to do that too. Yeah, I wanna acknowledge Daniel may be the only, um, the only um, male identified person, or Jonah, Jonah's here. Yeah, Daniel and Jonah here. And um, yeah, we've been speaking this most in terms of what, um, what women and non-binary people are at the impact, you know, how they're impacted by these topics and want to honor that, that everyone can be impacted by these things and each person is individual. It's just, there's some systemic issues that we've been addressing and, so that gets more focused at the, the harm that men have caused. Hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I think in terms of the topic, sometimes it can be really hard to identify, um, like people have said, when abuse is happening, especially when it's put in a very passive aggressive kind of, um, oh, what do you call it? Like subtle, subtle way, uh, just things like people being, um, Mis, misnamed, being called things or, um, you know, being told that their abilities are not what they think they are or telling people that they're not worth it. It's just, um, I think, kind of sometimes a hard thing to identify, but it's so important to call out and make sure that people are really validated on, you know, them being a whole self rather than what people say they are. Right. These would be like sexist microaggressions, for example. Yeah. yeah. Microaggressions come in all kinds of forms. I think um, 
we've become much more aware talking about racial microaggressions more recently and all kinds of microaggressions. Oh, Gaia, did you have something else you want to share? Go ahead. Yeah, Kristen, one of the things that I noticed always being kind of an outsider, partially because of who my family was, partially because of our financial situation, and partially because I was that most dangerous of all things in the 1950s, an intelligent woman, uh, something that needed to be as quickly suppressed and taken apart as possible. I found it relatively easy to call out aggression against other people. I, I even found it was possible when members of the group that I was in made comments, I, I found it was possible to say, that's not fair to say about that other person, but I could not say a thing when it was me. When I was being put down, when I was being shut off, I shut down and I shut off. And gentle, intelligent, kind people are incredibly vulnerable to the bulldozer people out there. And, and again, it's easier for us to rise up and defend someone else than to, than to have the tools to defend ourselves. And it's like, um, it's, re it's really helpful that we can have panels like this so that people don't have to be 70 before they realize they have a defense line. <laughs> and seriously, okay? So go for it, girl. And don't let them do it to you. Yeah, our, our safety security can get, you know, we can feel threatened and scared. And, and like, I know for me, like I just go out of my body all the time and like not think of the resources that I have in the moment. And yeah, so the more we empower each other being, feeling the field of all of us together. Sandra and then Lori. Ooh, Sandra and then Shiftwitch and then Lori, go ahead. Yeah, um, Kristen, thanks for bringing that up because the microaggressions are really, really key to being able to shift this dynamic as well as the movies that we watch on TV that are full of abuse, verbal and all kinds of abuse, the TV uh, programs that are full of jealousy and rage and vindictiveness and all those other things that create a society and uh, what we have. The research that I said about four out of five, 80% includes men, but men often are under reporting it because for men, it's acceptable to call each other stupid, idiots, crap, to put them down, you know, all kinds of verbal abuse, all kinds of physical abuse, all kinds of emotional abuse, and they're not supposed to react. And they may get into a fist fight with each other, but they don't identify it as being verbally abused, emotionally or mentally abused, but sometimes they are incredibly emotionally abused. So the Me Too movement for me is including men and um, releasing them from what they experience that's unhealthy and abusive in the world. So thanks, Kristen, for that point. Thanks, Sandra. Shift which, and then Lori. So one of the big things that I worked on moving past was um, in your job, not speaking up for fear of losing that job, for fear of the retaliation, things like that. Um, and I recently started a new job. I had just been self-employed for three years and recently started a new job. And right away in my second week, I got into a really tense situation. And my first instinct was my old instinct of just, you're new, shut up, don't rock the ship. And then I was like, no, if I lose this job, I'm not meant to have it because I need to live in my own integrity and if this is happening to me, 
as a brand new person that it has most certainly been happening to people who have been around, and it was another woman, this whole time. Just very verbally abusive woman. And so I reported it, and I'm hoping that, you know, I, I don't know what might come out of it yet, but hopefully this is something that will stop because no one ever believed the people who spoke up about her. I found out I'm like, well, I'm brand new. So I have no allegiances at all. <laughs> so, um, and so that was one of the things I promised myself is we're in past jobs. I was just too scared to say anything, to do anything that, um, I'm not going to do that anymore because if that's the path the universe has for me is to not be there anymore, then I need to trust that. And but I need to live with myself and my integrity every day. So sorry for the background noise. Oh, I got a lot. I'll wait. Hear it at all. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, any I, I would like to say, Kristen, that um, when people criticize you and it usually comes from a place of lack and it comes from a place of jealousy which means that to me that you're mirroring to them what they're not doing for themselves. So actually in a way it's a compliment if you look at it in another flip side, right? Because they're jealous and they're coming from their place of lack when they see what's in you and they see your gifts because criticism, that's where it comes from. They're jealous and, and it's, they're not in love. They're not operating from love. And there's only two operations. There's only fear and love. So you're either in one or the other, or we switch back and forth for it's always. But so as long as you hold your light nice and bright, it doesn't matter. You know, just just keep being the light that you are and, and just know that when they do that stuff, it comes from lack. And it's not really at you, it's their stuff, it's their journey, and it's their story, not yours. And just keep your head high. Okay. Yeah, I think that is so important because it does seem like a lot of times when those things happen, the person is kind of projecting this um, this space onto you. And a lot of times it feels like blame about you or in the environment, but then it seems like the accountability part, you know, you look at them and it's kind of a moment of disbelief. You're thinking, I don't really understand why you're talking about me when, you know, <laughs> It seems like this is about you, but you don't really recognize that. And that's exactly it. So keep that in mind when people are like that with you, okay? <laughs> yeah. Know that it's not you. It's coming from their story. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring up something about that too, that I, I fully believe, Lori, this is not your intention. I want to refer back to other people. Um, in my past, I've either heard or experienced some people have said, um, that when someone does some sort of microaggression, that it's a compliment and to focus on that part. And some people in the past have used that as a way to like shut me down or shut other people down and have us focus on how um, we can see the positive and focus on the positive and be quiet and not confront it. And I believe, Lori, that is not your intention. And I want to point out, though, to everybody, feel that appreciation that's actually under that, appreciate yourself. And it's also healthy to feel anger and to not want it and to see how you can feel safe and in your power to take actions, right? To change the situation, to stop it. You all reminded me of, um, now I'm like forgetting again. I had a, what was this? Well, it's, oh, when I, um, when I applied to grad school, I was interviewing for grad school and it's typical that we do rotations with different professors and there were several, several professors at, at Caltech that I thought I would do rotations with. And when I mentioned to the other graduate students that were taking me around on tour, one of them that I thought I wanted to do a rotation in, they, um, it was all women, and they said, no, don't do a rotation in that person's lab because um, he has demands of his female graduate students. And there was a female graduate student caught in that right then. And um, I, very young myself, right? I'm 21. I felt the trauma and the freeze in my body. And I knew at least to not work for him. I heard that message, but I have asked like, why, you know, why did I not say anything? Right? So why, why did I speak up? I mean, so in me being quiet, like I'm kind of acquiescing and it continued on. And fortunately, maybe 10 or 12 years later, I forget what it was. Finally, um, there was a lawsuit and it got publicized, but it was so much later. And this person, like the huge impact on her career, the person that was caught in that situation at that time.
you know? And so we at least in that way look out for each other to help prevent some of it, but then we also, right, caught in the system of not knowing how to empower ourselves. You know, Caltech was probably like seven men to every female, seven, seven men to every woman. And um, yeah, and you know, we're young at that time in our lives still, yeah. So Lori, I hope it's okay that I brought that up. I want to make sure that that's okay for you. Great. Great. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Anyone have anything else to share about that or related things that that brought up? Hmm. You did you know, a video about, about that exact topic of an experience of harassment, sexual harassment in the workplace when I was in my 20s, back in the early 70s, and uh, came in new to the workplace, and uh, the boss came over and, and started, com I was married, I had children, commented on how cute I was, and couldn't I wear a short skirt, and geez, blah, 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 and everyone in the office was laughing, the women and the men, and I was so uncomfortable with this man and i said something to the person sitting next to me and she says oh that's just his way don't worry about it but i saw him touching women coming up behind their backs touching them in inappropriate ways and i was getting more and more uncomfortable and every woman that i was working with in the workplace gave him a pass and it was really horrifying for me as a young woman to realize that the men were just saying whatever, but the women were also saying, it doesn't matter, he doesn't mean it. Well, what if I'm out with a party with the company and he gets drunk and because he's been allowed this behavior, he could do something worse. So I didn't stay at the job. But it really impacted me that women were not supporting women. Now, mind you, this is the 70s, the early 70s. Things have changed a lot. But men need to be speaking up for women. Women need to be speaking up for each other. And, and women need to be speaking up for men. The abuse that I have seen men taking is not OK, in my opinion, either. So. Yeah. And then just as you're sharing your story, I feel so tight in my jaw. And I will share this as um, this is one of the places where anger shows up in the body. I think the anger is yes and no. No, this is not okay. You know, yes, I want this other action taken. So yeah, if you're feeling different physical sensations as we talk about this, right? There are indications potentially of feelings that you're having. And Joanna, I know you have something you want to share and we'll get to you shortly. Go ahead, Gaia. You very briefly touched on something that's incredibly important as well. Uh, there are men who are just as much victim as many women. I'm not going to say it's all women, but there are, there are boys who have been molested. There are men who are not, hey, did you see the Mariners this weekend? Uh, kind of people who can be horribly tormented and belittled. Uh, and I think that it's part of our job as sensitive humans to step up whatever the gender of the person being exploited is uh, because the exploiters know that we won't. And, and they they relish the fact that you know, I don't think that it has changed all that much with women supporting women. Uh, I was just at a at a group uh, up in Canada, of all places, and and some guy made an incredibly inappropriate comment about one of the women there, you know, making him hot and hard, just like this little hot little bunny was holding a hot dog in a container. And I was the only person who said that's not appropriate. Everybody else seemed to think it was hilariously funny. Or, or, or they took the even more scary position that it is safer to be one of the people who's laughing so that you're not making any kind of target out of yourself. And that's another form by which people who abuse 
can control the environment that we're living in. Uh, I actually have never as seen an abuser not back off when someone calls them on it. It's kind of interesting. But when I call and say, uh, touching her bun isn't appropriate, they 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 oh, did I touch her bum? Oh, I didn't mean to. That was an accident. Um, and I'm thinking, really, that bad of a Tourette syndrome problem that your hands are out there doing things on their very own. But they stopped. And and so what's one of the really great advantages of being an older woman is that I get to call it. Yeah, I think it's just a range of people too. I know you have some of the archetypes that have you be more in your power maybe more easily. And so even though you've had lessons also where you weren't, you're able to channel that really well now. So a great teacher for us about that. Go ahead, Henry. Yeah, I think you touched on something um, important that um, it's safer not to speak up. And certainly in my own life, I have always spoken up and this has everything to do with my mom training me to speak up because she didn't want to have happened to me what to her to me what happened to her and uh like I, I'm reminded of a time where um I had a business and next door was a um a, a subway subway sandwich shop and the the um the manager would first of all they hired only these very young and very very pretty girls and the manager this was his MO that he would say I had a dream about you and you were naked in this dream and then goes from there. And, uh, and I'm hearing this for a little while, like maybe three, four times as I'm you know, waiting in line for a sandwich. And then suddenly one day I'm like, this is not okay. This is in the nineties. And I'm, I'm saying to the girl, you know, he is sexually harassing you when he's out of earshot. And she goes, mm, you know, like uh, I wanna keep my job. And so I'm like, oh, okay, I realize that, that she can't do anything. At least she feels she can't do anything at that time. So the next time, sure enough, there he is with his arm around her, squeezing her inappropriately with his hand close to her breast and accidentally grazing it. And I'm saying to him, you know, you are a sexual abuser and this has to stop. And if you don't stop, I'm going to write to Subway because they have more power than you do because they don't want you to run their shop if that's what you're doing. And so then his wife stepped up and fired him and she ran it. So, so, and he was so, woe is me. I'm just a very friendly person, you know? And, and, you know, I could really see that he feels that way, that he didn't have any sense of that this was traumatizing someone else. I honestly not for one second believe that he knew I'm traumatizing her and I don't care. He was just like, this feels good to me. How can this be bad? And there's this sort of invisibility that happens when you're ensconced in um, privilege, where nobody calls you out. So you don't even have any sensitivity to it. So that's something I remember. And I also want to say that, like, for example, um, when I first was together the first few years with my wonderful husband and partner, Stephen, but when I would bring these kinds of things up because they were churning in me when I would see this, he would he would get upset and say something like, you know, I hate that I have to pay the price for that because I would never do anything like that. And I've never done anything like that. And I will never do anything like that. That's just not who I am. And I completely agree that that's true. And finally, one day I said, well, I get that. But this is the reality of things. You are in a male body. And it is so much male to do that. And it's not the only ones who are doing that. There are certainly also people in female bodies who do this kind of thing. It's just not as predominant. And they're also not um, benefiting from privilege the way males do, especially white males. So, and, and my partner is a white male. So it's all, everything It's sort of like, depending on who it is, then it just keeps shifting. And there's other things that apply and the context is different. So I'm saying, you know, there's, there's some way that you have to deal with that, that this shows up. If you wanna be with somebody in a female body, such as myself, that's gonna show up. And what you can do is you can be an ally rather than internalizing, I'm being blamed for something I've never done and never would do. You can step out of that 
out of taking it personally, I'm being condemned along with all these other men and say, how can I be an ally? How can I be a support? And that was really eye-opening for both of us because that came out of my mouth and I didn't even know that was going to happen. It's like, right, right. So yes, I think I even see that in my own languaging that earlier when I was talking about, you know, let's call out who it actually is who's doing it. It's not something disembodied that occurs, even though our language makes it sound that way. At the same time, it's so important to also recognize that that people who identify as men are in male bodies, that that's an avenue to become uh, an ally. And allyship takes many forms and, uh, you know, the the amazing Google will show you all the different ways in which you can be an ally. And I think it's profound. I think it's empowering rather than being disempowered because, hey, I'm one of those men and I'm getting blamed for male privilege and yada, yada, and I'm getting blamed for, for sexual abuse and other abuses. You can, it's empowering to say, no, but I'm an ally. Thank you very much, Henry. That was beautiful. All right, well, if we have a bit of a pause here, I'm gonna invite Joanna to step in. Yeah, Joanna, what did you wanna, yeah, hi. Um, yeah, um, I've had a lot of experience in this, this topic as I'm, I'm sure most of us have. Um, it really, with, with what you shared, Henry, um, about allyship, one of the greatest most powerful things in my life was my grandfather, my grandee. He was the biggest advocate that, he, he was probably one of the biggest feminists I've, I've ever known of that no matter who you are, no matter what gender you are, you have the power within your circle of control to make a difference. Um, Throughout my life, I've, I've had various experiences with, of course, you know, sexism and having to discern how I, how I show up um, based off of how others have, have treated me. But I think probably the biggest thing is I ended up as a, an in, intuitive, sensitive individual marrying a covert narcissist. And it's, it really comes down to not just the larger society at whole, but really generational systemic trauma as his mother also is an overt narcissist. And it's breaking those general, generational patterns of, of not accepting that treatment anymore. Um, a few of the key points through all of the, the various things um, that really stood out to me is acknowledging, removing yourself far enough away from the situation to acknowledge the gaslighting because most narcissists, most, most individuals who are highly sexist and abusive, they are not just master manipulators of their targets. They absolutely have that power and control to navigate and present themselves and navigate their community to, to make people feel uncomfortable in taking them on and challenging this reality that they've created for themselves because they see nothing past themselves and their best interest. So from, from the various things I've experienced, it's not just men, it's women who raise men, it's fathers who raise daughters, it's the prior generations and the systemic trauma that comes from that in the workplace of this is acceptable and women taking on that narcissistic um, power shift into their own hands and manipulating it and then projecting it on other women as well. So those are some of the, the feedback pieces um, from all of the various conversations so far that I, I hope helps provide a little insight as well from, from my perspective, <laughs> hopping in here. Um, it, it really takes removing 
yourself even in the present moment to have a moment of peace and acknowledgement in what is true versus versus the versus the the bread and uh, the bread and circus over here versus what's really going on under the table. So those those are my two cents and lovely to to meet all of you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I say say during the last week I spoke with someone who's uh, probably around 30-ish who said that um, her mother was a narcissist. And um, after maybe about 15 minutes of chatting with her, it got really clear that this had been passed down to her while she was claiming that uh, a stepmother was the narcissist, which I, I can't tell if there was something there or not, but it's so clear that she's really now abusing her, her I'll say her husband. And um, yeah, just all the ways it gets passed down and the accusations and right, just to each of us and whatever our wounding is and ways that we hide ourselves from it and don't see it. And um, yeah, the way that narcissism in particular is so um, hurtful in the way it gets um, thrown out at other people. Yeah. And I know, yeah, narcissism is, um, healing from narcissism, as she mentioned earlier, is one of Lori's specialties. So Henry's got something to share and then, yeah, maybe more have more to share as well. Go ahead, Henry. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I, I, I'm not trying to, I don't want, I don't like monopolizing things. So if, if somebody else would like to share instead, uh, you know, I'd be totally happy with that. But okay, so, so yeah, so narcissism, I mean, the abuse that you suffer from narcissism, it, that's like, it's a little bit, well, it's different from sexual abuse. And in, in essence, you know, it, it undermines you and just like sexual abuse does, all abuse undermines you and um, makes you not be able to be in your body and be in your power. And narcissism is just so interesting and it's become so popular to talk about it. And I think that is just an amazing uh, change in our society that, that like almost everyone knows now what that is because narcissism is, first of all, it's so toxic. And at the same time, it's um, so incorrigible. And so what people do with narcissists is that they're trying to make it better. People who are not the narcissist in the relationship are trying to make it better because the person who's the narcissist seems to be so intelligent and so perceptive. And how could it possibly not help to identify what the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, except that what people don't know about narcissism is that the person who's the narcissist is so perceptive and intelligent with regard to themselves with regard to how they're operating, not with regard to understanding the world, because when you're a narcissist, you can't let the world in. So that, of course, um, somebody mentioned an inverted narcissist or, or maybe not covert, covert narcissist. So I am an inverted narcissist. So what happens is that if somebody criticizes me, I'm devastated by that. Just like glass chin or like cookie like it's made of a cookie, like you tap me a little bit and I just crumble to the floor and not anymore, but I certainly used to be like this. And, and it all, it, and, and so, and then it's like, oh my God, and I did this terrible thing and I'm so wrong and blah, 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 blah. And then what, what it's eventually I'm noticing is, oh, that every one of these sentences starts with I. Like, never mind. What's going on with the other person who who uh, feel, who who gave me the criticism and how 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 justified is it? So I've done a lot of work around that. My mom was, um, you know, a little bit narcissistic, and um, my brother is very narcissistic. And I, I, it, whew, I'm still working on it. I've taken many years of therapy, you know, off and on, and used every tool I have, and I continue to, and it gets better. It totally gets better. And so how I discovered that I'm narcissistic because the therapist said like, you're not. But how I discovered is that the narcissistic wounding, if I have that. So therefore I am some kind of narcissist. And But I'm very, very lucky and very, very blessed that I'm cognitively aware of what I'm doing. And I, why I say that is because we um, vilify narcissists and, and they certainly, you know, uh, 
call that forth. And at the same time, except for the ones who are malignant, which is like a different kind of narcissist, that's the narcissist who takes pleasure from your pain and who takes pleasure from being hurtful and damaging. The other narcissists, you know, I've, I have deep compassion because they can't feel the love. They can't feel the connection. They can't feel the, the, the communion with another human being. They can't feel the joining of minds, the joining of hearts. They can't feel that when you come together, like we are coming together, where we're talking about things and we're kind of growing with each other, that's all close to a narcissist. Like when I think about Trump, you know, I mean, I'm not sorry for him and what he's done to us, but I'm sorry for him and how even, even 50,000 people saying I love you at a rally can never be enough because can't absorb it. So that is what, what, what I thought about when I heard about narcissism. So I think we have every reason to be compassionate, but also to keep them at an arm's length. And I don't know what the formal names are for it, but I've noticed that sometimes we talked about that a narcissist and an empath get together. Sometimes an empath that is, um, they get so, um, they may feel crushed by their, narciss their narcissist, narcissist at sometimes, but there are other, there are also ways they hold the narcissist up at a pedestal and protect them from other people. And it's actually a bit of a form of narcissism too in the catch. And there it's really hard what happens it's so tricky so tricky isn't it yeah yeah personally oh. i i would just say that it's codependency and not narcissism for me mm -hmm. because i think narcissists somehow their synapses are not connected right which is why it's so difficult for them to heal and to step out of that whereas an empath and the compassion that you're describing, Henry, um, is what attracts us to them because we can feel their, you know, their lack and their pain and that void, that emptiness inside. And so our instinct is to heal them. But I think that is codependency and not a form of narcissism for me. That's my interpretation. Oh. Um, and I think you're saying keep them at arm's length is so important because when we determine that somebody is so toxic, it's really important to give them compassion and send them on the way. Keep them as much as we can to say, you know, OK, I, I feel for you. I see you. I love you if that's true. And you're not in my life. <laughs> because that toxicity will just harm us no matter what we do. We can't, we can't heal them. They have to heal themselves and it's said that they can't or they won't. I don't know if that's true. I tend to not want to believe that anybody can be healed, but they have to choose it and they don't choose it. So I wouldn't say you are a narcissist of any kind, shape, way, shape or form, Henry, for me. <laughs> I hope that isn't offensive. <laughs> well, I'm a narcissist in, in so far that I experience narcissistic injury, where it becomes all about me. And then I have to go, you know, snap out of it. Think about the rest of the world. Be like, you didn't do anything that was so bad that you need to be on the floor about it. That's just over, over, you know, blowing it over. You're not that important. And not in a diminishing myself, but in a, in a putting perspective on it. But you're absolutely right. Like my brother's a narcissist and I tell him, I love you. I hold you in light and love. I really love you, but at a distance. Say, so, I think for those of us that grew up around narcissists, right? There's always the risk that we fall into some of those behavior patterns and the willingness to look at that and inquire and see some of the ways they show up in us. That's one of the things that has us not be narcissists is really the willing to face that and face that and face that. Now I, I use a different definition than a lot of people of a, a greater continuum where I look at some of the patterns such as um, gaslighting and things like that, that um, even if someone doesn't have all of the traits for a formal diagnosis. So that's I, I agree, codependence definitely is a, a related thing, different thing. So Lori's got some comments and then we do have two people that have paid for questions. So we're gonna get on those next. It's gonna be um, Jonah and then Lisa. Go ahead, Lori. Um, I just want to say that narcissism, even though it seems like a sense of um, overinflated sense of self, um, it actually comes from a place of not feeling good enough. 
right? But they always have to over project, you know, who they are. And they do prey on empaths because they look for the kindness. They know that they can get their narcissistic supply from you, right? They know that you're going to love them and then you're going to admire them. and You're going to want to help them because that's what we are. Empaths always want to help and we want to hold people up. And that's what they want. They want people that hold them up, right? But as soon as you nail them on who they are, that's when all the other characteristics come out, the, the claws, the, the nastiness, the anger, you know, the deflection, the putting it back on the gaslighting, you know, all the flying monkeys, everything, you know? So it, 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 that's, if you can always just think that really they're a hurt person, you know, underneath all that bravado, they're really hurting. And so if you can look at it from that point and send them love, I know it's hard. It's very difficult when you're in that position because I too have been there and I'd rather, you know, do some other nasty things, but trying to be understanding from where they came from, I think it's a good starting point to understand where, you know, that person is and who they are. And to know that it's also just a projection from when they were a child that they got hurt so bad that they had to present that, that facade, right? So I just wanted to add that a little bit. And I only learned just about a month ago that um, part of it is inherited, that we can now track it in the DNA. So I didn't know that too, right? It's yeah. behavioral nurture and then also lack of nurture. And then, um, yeah. Well, I think ancestrally too, right? Because DNA. Well, yeah, that's what, yeah. 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 Exactly. All right. Well, let's see. So Jonah has got the first question. So Jonah, what is your question today? Okay. And I just wanted to check. I've asked. Uh, questions before I don't know if Lisa um, Stewart has hasn't asked a well, question it's okay I try to go in the order that people paid and all that if, if you don't want to go first it's fine you don't have to but you get the first option yeah okay no I, either way as long as there's time for both of us yeah there is um, so I can I can share a little bit about things that I think are imbalanced and possibly you know abusive in in my past and so forth um, but I don't know I uh I'm not sure what the most empowering language is, but basically a lot of things come from, I have four parents, uh, mother, stepfather, father, stepmother. Um, they've all kind of raised me. I think the school systems can right, rightly be called abusive. Um, I was part of the Native American church and had an elder that I think put in me in abusive situations and people that just don't know better. So they, they're, they're just kind of where they're at and they do the things that they do because they're human, you know? Um, so. So, I mean, my big question is if you have psychic or whatever other hits about what, um, is there stuff that's still in my way or are there or ways that I'm still, um, things that I, I'm not having difficulty getting over or having difficulty seeing basically. Um, so I could just ask that, or again, I can give you a little bit more details or background if that's gonna be useful for, for people. Maybe I just want to jump in and say briefly before we go even deeper. Um, I don't remember when the first time was that you came to one of our panels. It might have been like a 10 months, a year ago, something like that. You are so much more in your body now than mm. you were then. So whatever you're doing is working really well. Because for me, that would have been the biggest edge and the biggest um, like characteristic of who you are that can be a gift and also can be a shadow. And so just getting more and more in your body as you've been doing, really, really good. Okay. So yeah, so keep going and, and other people may have more things and I may have more to share later too. It's helpful to hear your history and to, to know more of where you came from. Well, okay, so I can but give just a little bit, a little bit I say, of I don't, I say I don't know if people need more now, but for me, even just hearing this about your history and knowing this where I haven't known this before is helpful. So I just, I let's see, see if, if people wanna share more first before you share more, I wanna check yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, that makes Thank sense. Thank you, thank you for being willing. Okay, yeah. I'd just like to jump in. I'm hearing that you do um, also in the theta work that I do, and I forget what other person, was it Lori, who also does theta, um, that the work uh, in theta goes in to shift the DNA. And uh, I just checked, and you do have some uh, some DNA that, that you've inherited that is affecting you in the abusive mm -hmm. way. and, and attracting the abuse and one mm. of the things in theta that happens is when you shift that dna you shift it for all the whole dna chain going all the way back and going forward so it's really really helpful to clear those things from your dna 
So I just wanted to put that out that I heard that. Okay. And are you a practitioner or should I, I can seek this out in other places? Yeah, I am. And so is Lori. Is it right, Lori? It was Lori also do Theta Healing. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, Gaia, go ahead. Uh, I do a form of past life healing that you can actually go back and be in the moment that the damage occurred and heal that damage and heal the damages of the people around you who caused that because they caused it because they're damaged. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that could be in a past life as well as a present life. And then we can turn around and we can give you a future memory in which you erase that from you. And, and as was pointed out, from your whole chain, it's really quite exciting to, uh, to watch that happen. And it uh, is a, it's just a slightly different method of achieving the same cleansing thing. And I'm say too, really important to do that though, because otherwise uh, you'll pass it on. Mm -hmm. Even if just from your behavior, not not necessarily physically passing it on. I want to say Sandra and Gaia, these may both be like much more involved therapies, so there's no way you can do some portion of it now. But if there's any smaller samples of anything that you can do now, that's great. Just if there is, but I don't know. Lori, same thing. But. Go ahead, whoever wants to share next, or if one of you wants to jump in with something about that. Well, one of the things that I release, because I, when I deal with narcissism, is I have five normal things that I release in theta. Unlovableness, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna bring further. Unlovableness, um, unworthiness, um, not enough, um, not feeling um, confident, and not feeling love. love. So all those things are things that I release as well as many more depending on the person um, just to begin with because that starts getting you know your own sense of self better. So being able to go down deep and, and relieve those emotions that were caused by our perpetrator. Okay okay thank you and I'm, I'm happy to do Anything that I can empower myself like a regular practice for myself, that's good. Or again, if you're getting specific hits, or if you want to ask me a question that'll drill deeper so I have a handle on something like what I can release, um, or however you want to handle things, however you, however you do that, that's useful. Are you wanting us to do a little demo, Lorelai? Is that what you're... Yeah, well, so I'd like, I love if we can do something for the person. Okay, so I, I can do that with you, Juna, if, you're, yeah. if you're open to it. I can relieve a couple of deep uh, emotions for you, if you like. Okay. Oh, I, sure. do, I do a combination of things when I do stuff, but um, it's basically theta with this, with um, Seraphim Blueprint. I call on the angels to also help you. So it gives you an extra added boost. So if you just want to relax for a minute. Right now, Jonah, Mother Mary has you in her arms and she's giving you so much unconditional love. While we work on you.
I'm also seeing a great big ancient guide come forth for you. And he's, he's a guardian angel for you. And he wants you to call on him. I'm not sure you'll have to ask him his name. In meditation or just ask him. you um, feel anything or get any messages at all? I felt more light oh, um, in my low back. There's pain that'll, or discomfort that'll come and go. Here. Um, I guess I just have my own meditative practice of tapping in and going, just feeling held or something like that. I didn't, I didn't get specific messages or visuals or anything. And sometimes you won't, right? You might get them later. Like everything happens as it should, when it should. So I'm hope I, I see a difference in your face actually when I came back too. So you look mm -hmm. a lot better. Like you look really sad to me before. You don't mm -hmm. seem as sad now. That, are you feeling that way? Uh, that's probably accurate. Uh, and I actually, I see it in my face too with a little window. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I hope that helped you, Jonah. Okay, I, I, I imagine it did, thank you. You're welcome. I just wanna ask Jonah, I picked up that you've done quite a bit of work in the recent past with, uh, in particular, you know, the throat chakra speaking up and uh, verbalizing, whether it's in writing, I don't know if you're keeping a journal, but also in receiving, being open to receiving messages of your worth from others. Is that true? That's probably accurate. I mean, I just keep, keep on my own spiritual and self-growth kind of path. And um, over the last couple of years, yeah, especially uh, more you know, there's men's group, Mankind Project is a, a men's group type thing that I do. And there's a lot of sharing there. You know, I've been pretty involved in that. Um, and just in general, in kind of sharing, and I probably have reached a point of more self-love and kind of in the sense of self-acceptance and sort of like, well, I'm just going to do my own thing. You know, it doesn't, I'm not going to be too bothered or I'm not going to let my teenage anxieties whatever wherever you know i'm i'm not going to let my stuff get involved as much is that is that kind of accurate to what you're talking about yeah yeah there's still some blockage there so still continue on that journey but i heard that you've removed a lot of it um recently it's it's opening up the other uh limitation is a bit in your solar plexus in your empowerment and your personal power and in your root chakra your root mm -hmm. chakra is about safety, feeling safe. And it's really critical that you do some work with the chakras to get, and, and that entails all kinds of things. It's not just, you know, doing a chakra thing because that'll work a little bit, but you've got to remove the limiting beliefs and the programming, but to find that safety where you're safe and where you're grounded, from your root chakra will allow your solar plexus to open up so you can step into your power and your throat chakra to then um, hear people uh, validate you as uh, the powerful man that you are, person that you are, and to be able to speak your truth. And I'm hearing really clearly that 
you have quite a few really intelligent things to tell other people to share with other people and so i want to encourage you i'm i'm hearing i also see your guides you've got quite a few intense angels and guides around you that um they're they're sending you on this journey so that you can start speaking and assisting other people in their development as they grow so that you can start stepping into your third eye your purpose your life's purpose and open up to that does that mm -hmm. ring true for you um yeah i feel like the some of the um like i have a pretty strong intuition and maybe strong gifting for for this era in time and a um, fair amount of teacher in me or something like that it's a conveyor of information um and and um i've been getting involved with the art of living sri sri ravi shankar is kind of the head, head guru there um that has felt right to me they do so they do a regular breathing practices and then you you clear out your chakras just by Great. doing some some breath work there so hopefully that will be enough i could do specific stuff for some of the chakras but it's also a way to convey the higher truth and the higher purpose of being here as human beings you know and there's a lot of things that i see about the gnarliness of the system and like how archaic and gross and you know it is and how much we need to outcreate it and yeah there's a lot of insights i, I think that i have or, or to, to convey to people that i want to convey to people um, i want to communicate a lot of what i'm seeing mm -hmm. Yeah, as you were talking, the angel just said, tell him, tell him that it's important to be humble and to be uh, gracious and to not be in his ego and to accept his own power, how powerful he is uh, at the same time. And that that's going to be the task is how to do that. You've already got the humbleness. You've already got the <laughs> lack of being egotistical about it. And now how do you speak your truth from that place of enlightenment and empowerment that will speak to others and still being humble and knowing, you know, you have a lot more to do in life. I hear that you have no idea how powerful and how meaningful the messages are that you can convey. So they want you to hear that. <laughs> and accept it <laughs> okay right right yeah that's sorry I'll, I'll go on but that is something where i feel like there's more clarity coming through than i can articulate and i do feel the power like we are each sources of infinite power and and um and you can praise that and you can you know uh, accept it in yourself and other people there there is there's self-love stuff and there's standard human issues that i've got to you know clear out more but but um the message of enlightenment is so 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 important in getting people to be able to access that themselves yeah thanks so much all right henry's got something to share mm -hmm. and actually i'm jumping in front of the shift which i'm sorry shift which had her hand up first so shift which go ahead and then henry hey um so what I was showing right away when I tuned into you was uh, this progression. And so what I saw first was when you were younger, you building these very, very sturdy walls around you. And there were different things they were made of. Um, and over time, you have dismantled many of those, but I still, so what I'm still seeing is there's like this glass piece that's left. Um, and it was, it's the last part and it used to be very dirty and very cloudy and you couldn't see through it and people couldn't see you through it. And what you have been doing is you have been clearing that and it's becoming thinner so you know at first it was very much like uh the the bulletproof glass the very 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 thick and it's becoming thinner and thinner and thinner um but it is still there and that's okay just remember 
to let things move through it. Like light is the, the easiest thing to move through glass. So it's the easiest thing to let through. So let that, you know, like some of the other people mentioned, you know, let those affirmations you're given by other people, let the compliments you're given by other people move through. And our, our first instinct when things like that come at us is to go, is to self-deprecate and go, no, 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 no. Simply say thank you. That is the only response that is ever needed to somebody giving you a true mm. light filled compliment um, or observation about yourself is to simply say thank you. And that's all you, that's the only response that's ever required. And uh, so the other thing about was the journaling, which I know Sandra asked you about um, journaling. That is an absolutely excellent outlet and it's a great way to organize your thoughts and ideas, especially ones that would be helpful to share with other people. So you don't just have to keep a personal journal. You can keep a, you know, a thoughts, a growth journal, um, things that I've learned and might share with other people. This can be multiple things. They do not have to exist as one thing. Um, it can be, you can keep different journals for these different purposes as well as you're growing. And then I do see just tons of different guides around you, just like so many different guides around you that you have. Um, every time you've healed something, another one has come in is what I've seen. And so call on them when you need them. If you feel like something is coming back up for you that you thought you had released, they can absolutely help you with that. Because that is unfortunately kind of how humans are. We, we think we've completely healed something and we'll hear a song, we'll smell a smell, something will happen that will trigger that again. So rather than let it suck you back in, allow yourself to, um, did we lose him? Where'd he go? I know people moved around. Did he pop out? He might've popped out. Sometimes yeah. he's trouble with technology. Yeah. Awesome. yeah I don't know technology. Uh, well, he can watch the recording at least. I'll, <laughs> I'll finish that one thought. If he gets the recording, then when he comes back, I'll finish it for. But yeah, just to allow those guys to help, to help heal those things that, that can come up again. So we'll see, hopefully he'll pop back in here. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Darn it, technology. I know. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll come back. He gets back in. I know he's had that um, happen before. Sure. All right. Were there more that wanted to share more with him? Did we get, we got pretty close. Oh, Henry, you had more or you're just. Should I just oh, say yeah, it? Hmm? Should I just say it so that he can see it when he. Um, go ahead and say it briefly. He can go back and then if he comes back in, we'll come back to him. Yeah. That's right. So, oh. so, um, uh, so Jonah, if you have, if you ever watch this back, I also see a, a profound change in you. There's a, you are so much more present. And uh, yeah, I think that says it. Um, the sense I get is that this card here, the, you're in the land in between. You're in you between. Hold, hold it up again for a moment. I want to spotlight it so we can see it better. You're in between the places where you have to do a lot of work and where you are whole and where you are in the experience of your wholeness and you can now pass this on you're kind of somewhere here but i think you're really close to just making that final leap and i think that's the sense for all the cards that are here i want to keep it short all the cards that are here are talking about making that final leap so um, you're doing wonderful work in drawing to yourself teachers and drawing to yourself programs that help you heal yourself. I mean, the amount of work you do and how you commit it to your wellness and well-being is just really commendable and it's admirable. And I feel you're so close to just claiming that you're like baked, you're the, like the buns in the oven, you're baked. You can take it out and start savoring it. That's beautiful. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, so hopefully... Joan, I'll make it back in here today. Beautiful for Joan to go back. So, all right. I just 
we're right at 6 p.m. So we're just about two hours into the recording. So we can help him find it. I can help him find it again if I point it out to him. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. I know you just said it. So we'll do the same. But And shift what she have. You wanted to finish up any thoughts too when he gets in here. All right, Jonah's back. Hey, welcome back. Okay. Hey. I don't know if you guys <laughs> about me or what you did. Um, power went out for a second and then the router went out. So anyway. Oh gosh. <laughs> so we did uh, sort of keep going with our thoughts. So it is on the recording, but I'm also going to tell you what I was saying when everything <laughs> went out on you. Um, just to, if you feel anything coming back up from the past that you feel like you've already worked through, let mm. those guides help you through that. Like just ask them for help. Like just close your eyes, go into that space of meditation, breathe and, you know, ask for, for help letting that go once more, if you get pulled into something rather than just letting it kind of keep swirling okay and i'm not sure where exactly it cut off but i'm, I'm gonna stop there <laughs> mm, sure. yeah thank you and let henry go yeah thanks Chip. which okay henry go ahead well uh jonah um it's all on the recording and i'll be on there twice so mm. first thing i want to say is that since the last time i've seen you i feel more peace in you and I feel more presence, that you're more present. So when there's a lot of internal things that are difficult to manage, then we're more present to them. And so I think this has calmed down some, so you can be more present to what's around you. Are you experiencing that? I think so. That, that feels yeah. right to me. Yeah. And so I, I pulled a number of cards. It's like my whole table is full of cards and so the one that I feel actually will this is the one I want to talk to you about and that got spotlighted so if you want to go back at the two hour mark you'll be able to see this card but real quick I want to talk to you about this card here and uh, this is the fool's card and the sense mm -hmm. I got was you know I know how you draw different modalities to you and you seek out different healing paths and it, you're internalizing that and you're healing yourself you have a tremendous commitment to your healing right mm. is that true so and that also is going to make you an amazing teacher and so i think perhaps one that might be really powerful for you is to join a laugh club a laughing club have you heard of those like laughter yoga yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. It, sometimes it's yoga, sometimes it's just a club of people laughing. I think that's because that's embodied. And I think that could really make a huge difference with your neural networks. And then to go back to this, um, this land in between. I'm gonna wait till you've written that down. So over here is the Jonah who is doing all this work first, you know, you've come a long way and you're really far along. And I feel you're really close to making the leap over to where you are. Now, as I was putting it earlier, where you're like the buns in the oven are baked and you can open the oven door and you can take the bake the buns out and they're just aromatic and savory. That's you, right? And they're ready to go. I feel you're like, you're like already leaping. I think you froze. Yeah, I know. I think he's frozen again. So like, is he still here? So if you can still hear it, I think you're already in the leap. And what it'll take is to claim it. To like say, I claim that I am whole and I am complete. Yep. It's a message that evidently he is still taking in. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> mm, That's well, exactly what I'm thinking too, Lorelai. He's still sort of here, so he might have heard, but he seems to be yeah. out of, yeah, he's out of audio. He gets you know, and it's perfect as it is, because it is as it is. In a divine universe, there are no mistakes. And at least that's what I believe. Yes. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you, Jonah, so much for your question. I hope that you make it all the way back in again for the rest of the event and uh, that we get you the recording so you can listen again.
listened fully to what was shared. All right. All right, let's see. So we've got Lisa also in line. Lisa, what is your question? Hey, good evening, everyone. I, I'm loving all of this. Such great insight and advice. I feel like I'm surrounded by aunts and sisters. So this is great. My question is, I feel like I've lost my voice. Um, I grew up with a narcissistic mother. Her mother was narcissistic as well. And every day I question whether or not I'm narcissistic. And of course, um, I have found a few groups on, in um, <clears throat> Facebook, like Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers, that come back and let, let me know that, you know, no, if I'm questioning whether or not I'm a narcissist, chances are I'm not. So this is very heart <laughs> heartening to me. But, you know, I always check in every day going, you know, is my motivation, you know, anyway. So my question is, I think that I've lost my voice and my self-prescribed therapy growing up was making, and it was always my dream to build a small empire with my art on it. And so I, you know, went through all the sexual harassment, all that nasty stuff that young women go through in corporate America, um, found, you know, all the wrong guys who, you know, gaslit, all that happy stuff. Finally found my husband at 35, very encouraging, very supporting, very loving. And at, from that point, I transitioned out of corporate America to start building my own business and had my own retail shop. And I was very happy with that. You know, I felt like I was living my dream, but um, I was being met again through um, hostile friends and hostile locals. I was living in North Carolina. People would come into my shop telling me, um, if you're not from around here and you don't, you didn't go to school here and you don't attend church here, you know, I can't support you and I'm going to tell my friends to, and, you know, all while, you know, scratching her fingernails on my leather goods. And so I'm just like, okay, I've, I've worn out my welcome to North Carolina. We have to move. And at which point my husband was trying to find a job and all the, all these jobs came in from Seattle. So we moved to Seattle five years ago and I, we can't make because we don't have the space, but I find other ways to make and keep my hands somewhat dirty and decided that I would then help other small businesses um, as an intuitive brand strategist and working in um, trying to work on my voice through Toastmasters the last four and a half years, I still find where my mind goes blank, even though I know the material. I've lived it. I understand it. But for whatever reason, I feel like my synapses either they're like a ping pong uh, machine or they just go blank. And so what insights can you give me? I'd love to hear it. Thank you. Oh, Gaia, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to do a little bit of a therapy thing with you for just a quick second, if I could. All right. Uh, and I know that my sisters here will be sending me energy to help me out, which is one of the most exciting things about being empowered in a forum. And I'd, I'd like you to close your eyes for just a moment. And I'd like you to put yourself in the place where you feel the best, wherever that may be. And I want you to smell the smells. I want your fingers to feel the feels. I want you to just be able to call up what it feels like when you are where you really feel most safe and comfortable. And if that place has to be imaginary, that's just fine. And some people feel a place and some people see it as if it was a movie. And some people just know, they just know. They know the answer. 
And that is what is important because you know the word. You have so many things going on at the same time that like the juggler with 12 things in the air, something is going to slide out of line. So I want you in this perfectly safe environment to say, I know that in three seconds, my mind will supply me with exactly the word that I should be using. And if it's not the word I thought of originally, it doesn't matter because it's going to be exactly the word for that moment. And know that all you have to do to evoke this state is to say to yourself, I'm going down, down, down into my safe space where all the ganglia of my mind are interconnected like beautiful lace. And exactly the word I need will be on my lips by the time I think all of this beauty for myself. And it will be there and you will have it and you'll be so surprised because you thought it was going to be so hard. And instead, your angels hand it to you immediately. And as long as you're using those words for support and good and love and practical purposes, the word will be right there. Because you are a blessed entity and you have chosen to come into our planet with the most amazing gifts for so many people that we can't have you not be able to find out your word. Blessed be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gaia. All right, practitioners, who else wants to jump in for Lisa? Go ahead, Henry. Lisa, I'm gonna pin you so I can see you really big. Wow, I'm like in this. Thank you, Gaia. I closed my eyes, that was for me too. So I was reminded of um, not having a voice myself. And, uh, and I still deal with that a little bit because the neural networks of feeling that people don't want to hear you, or that was the case for me, they don't go away, but they're not as easy to trigger. But I have a little funny thing, like I've been up here a lot, for example, and talking. So I have a, I hope I'm not overdoing it. I hope I'm not like speaking too much, you know? So that's that old thing. So it's not that it disappears, but it doesn't have to be the operative um, principle. And so perhaps what you're talking about is that that's too present in your life, that you don't have a voice, because surely you have a voice in many ways. You hear you speaking, right? So where is it in your life that you feel you don't, like you've lost your voice or you don't have your voice? I think it's in two areas. One, like Gaia, I can speak up for other people, but I couldn't speak up for me. And I still have unresolved issues with some clients who won't pay their bills and I won't, you know, go after them because they're attorneys. So it's like, oh, I guess I don't need the $1,500. And the other, the other aspect is when, and I just recently pivoted to help mystics, right? Help the other intuitives build their business because I was trying to help STEAM and STEM entrepreneurs, you know, engineers who don't need help, 
right? And so it was always very male dominated. And I would try to keep a boundary between me as I would talk to them, but still I felt psychically attacked and dismissed with all of the experience I've had with STEM and making and being in, you know, UX and UI and, and being that, that first female, right? One of the first females in the 90s in, um, in web development and learning what usability is and user interface. And, you know, people tell me, oh, you can't do both. And I'm like, I was there. I did do both. You know, and so being constantly dismissed about, you know, gaslit and dismissed at the same time, it was interchangeable. And I'm like, you know, and so it's just frustrating. So where, so I get it, you know, um, I, I, I think I understand you just saying you're being dismissed, right? And so where is the connection between the act of dismissing and you not having a voice? Because somebody could dismiss you and you can you could say to them, hey, you, and then curse word, uh, that's not going to stop me, right? You could say that. But there's something happening here, right? Where it's like, here, be dismissed, and then here's you saying, I don't have a voice. So where is that? What's happening there that you, you conclude you don't have a voice? I think it's because I don't stand up for myself and there there's a disconnect because I'm in disbelief, right? I can't believe he just said that. I can't believe they just did that. You know, so it's then it's then it's a not just one guy, but it's a panel of guys going, you know, we don't know why you're upset, you know, when we've taken over um the brand strategy for the Chamber of Commerce when I was the one who was assigned to it. Mm -hmm. Right. And suddenly it's not just one guy coming out of the woodwork. It's a whole panel supporting him going, well, we met in secret because we decided. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I thought, you know, oh, well, if I move to the Pacific Northwest, it won't be like that. The South is like that. I'm just going to leave that in the South. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is everywhere. And so it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, do I continue, you know, doing web design and steam things or do I pivot and start making again? in the guise of, it's very transactional, creating digital planners and things like that. So that way it's no longer one-on-one -on -one and I don't have to interface with their um, their issues, right? They buy my planner, see ya. Right. So I think um, what's coming up for me is two things and I'm not sure which one is right for you uh, or they may be both right for you. So on the one side, the life coach in me says that you're internalizing what's what's how you're being treated. And that that's what's shutting you down. Whereas if right at the point where it comes out of the mouth, you go, it's like you think of it as a ball and you just toss that ball right back. You're not even catching it. You just bounce it off. That's not for me. Those words are not for me. Like, like that, that, that can help you. That's kind of an kind of energetic work because there's no, no physical ball there that we can see, but you can imagine like little ping pong balls coming out of the mouth of the people who are being dismissive of you or who are stealing from you, you, your credit or your position or, or, or the, the projects. And you can just bounce them right back instead of internalizing, because there might be this moment where you go, what is it about me? Or what is it about the world that this is happening? And, and if you ask that, you get stuck right there because what and why are like glue. As soon as you ask what or what is it about the world or why is the world like that? Pow, you are now stuck here. Because now it seems that the way forward is to find an answer, but the answer makes no difference. Only what am I gonna do next? What's my action here? So blah, 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 condescend, condescend. Then like, what am I gonna do when this happens, when the condescension happens or when this, when this injustice happens? Who am I gonna be? What's in alignment with the being that I am? So rather than let me read a book on how you deal with these 
people <laughs> like curse words want to come out of my mouth but we don't we're not going to do that what rather than reading a book and like you know entrepreneurs to talk about how you deal with difficult clients and all that rather than doing that and that could be good too it's like saying what's in alignment with myself what is my true response here and then that's it, where your power seat is right What's in alignment with you is your power seat. And the other thing I was thinking that's a little bit different is that you could, um, and this is something I can't offer because I don't do it, but you could, uh, it helped me tremendously. I, I felt I had no voice. I couldn't speak. I couldn't write. I couldn't speak up. And I saw a hypnotherapist and uh, I can recommend her. She's really inexpensive. She lives in Germany. We met early in the morning, very early in the morning. And, uh, and it, it really did wonders for myself. So um, there are some active things that you can do like, uh, like power of suggestion things. And, and like, uh, like this is my, before it became like a white supremacist symbol, this was, <laughs> was it's terrible. This is what I chose. So when I do this, I'm like, ah, People want to hear me, but I'm not sure that it's that you think people don't want to hear you or that you're dealing with sexism. I don't know which it is. It could be a little bit of both, mm -hmm. but that's what I have for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, what, Henry. Lori, I know you want to go next and I want to jump in because Lisa is watching you as Henry was sharing. And for a while when Henry was sharing, you're leaning on your hand. And then for part of the sharing, you weren't. And then towards the end, your head was at an angle. And I'm wondering what you're aware of, you were thinking or feeling inside as Henry was sharing. Can we go back 15 minutes to rewind all this? <laughs> no, I know. Well, so you probably want to go back and watch the video again. And then even your hand right here. So mm -hmm. the reason why I bring this up is because, so this often is a signal of being disengaged. And so I'm wondering if you had some other message going through your head that was an opposite of what Henry was sharing and tipping the head to the side and cutting off the expressive pathway is mm -hmm. cutting off some, it's like a blocking of expression. And it could be that you're thinking about the situations Probably and how you're blocking not. expression, or it mm -hmm. could be that there's some else, something else that you're thinking, feeling that you don't want to say in the moment or so. Yeah. I just, and even this, it's all kind of related to blocking expression. So I'm not like to be paranoid and that we don't do these things. You know, I've watched that, but I touch myself at various points during this whole, this mm -hmm. whole panel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you for letting me mention that. No, absolutely. And, and when you brought that up, I was thinking about the moments where I was doing that. And I was thinking about how angry I was coming back from a particular chamber meeting. And I was on the phone with my husband and I was just absolutely livid. And I had him on speakerphone. I don't like talking on the phone while I'm driving the car, but I was absolutely livid. I had to explode. I was so upset. And I'm like, you know, I don't get it. I don't get why people do this, you know? And, and it's I like, wanted, I don't tell them what to do. And I want to just shift you that feeling the anger. It's not, you might've had some aggression mixed in there too. It's, it's messy. It's okay. Right. There's old stuff that comes up in there too, but feeling in the aggression or the anger of this of, and I just, sorry, Paul, I'm jumping in. It's like, this is not okay. This was not okay. This was not okay. So can you say something like that right now? Me? Yes. This, this is not okay. About that situation with them. Right. This was not okay. Right. This was not okay. Great. Say it again. This was not okay. This was not okay. Right. So staying in that energy, that's helpful. Right. So in the moment, you might not have been wanting to feel all that in the panel in the moment. And that could be some of what all this was, but it's like, right. right so our bodies give us messages that there are other things going on. So thanks for going on that venture with me. All right. We've got Lori and then Sandra. Lisa, I'm going to come from a little bit of a different perspective for you. So when I was listening to you, what I what came for me was it really triggers you when they, when they talk to you and engage with you like that. So I would be wondering, what is it in me that I haven't healed that's causing that charge? Because I know from my own journey, every time like I, and I'm continuing to heal, right? We always are. So I know I was triggered by a lot of things until I dealt with them and, and, and brought them up and healed them in whatever way. Like, I mean, theta and stuff, you don't have to relive. You don't have to go through anything in a lot of these holistic healing ways, right? So to me, that tells me you haven't healed that, that wound because that's what it is. It's a wounding, right? 
So I think the best place for you to get to is when you're not being triggered and you're not reacting to their stuff because it's their stuff, it's not you, right? If you can just look at them and go, okay, that's their stuff. I can do my part of this or whatever. And the rest is just theirs, right? Like the emotions and all that, leave it out if you can. But you're keeping, you're being triggered emotionally. Mm -hmm. and, and I felt a really heavy charge in there. So it tells me you have some really deep healing yet to do, Lisa, which is great. Like, I mean, we all have to, right? We continually grow and heal. But that's, that's kind of what I was getting from that. So I don't know if that resonates with you or, but I did give you a private message too. And I also invited you to my group because I do try to go outside of the box in my group and really give you things to think about that people don't always look at as a narcissist. Okay, so I just wanted to add that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Lori. All right, Sandra. Yeah, I want to piggyback on both Henry and Lori. Um, when Lori mentioned about, you know, asking why is this happening to me, that the question of why, when you use the question why for a, to, about a negative, it's like quicksand, you're just stuck. The universe always gives us the answer. So if you say, why is this happening to me? It just gives you the answers, more experiences, more examples about why it's happening. And it's like quicksand. So uh, there is something called lofty questions that uses the why question. And so you turn that on its, on its um, heels and say, why am I, a, why am I such a mag, uh, why am I such a magnificent magnet to attract people who respect and see my magnificence or something like that about the kind of people that you want to attract into your life? And the universe goes, oh, I'll show you why. And then just gives you all kinds of experiences and uh, examples about why you can attract the kind of people who uh, who see you for your brilliance and for your wonder. So craft a statement like that and then just get up every day or anytime you encounter that it's not true, just keep saying that. And the universe will give you the answers. And um, I, uh, when you first started talking, I asked you, you ask a couple of things about, are you a narcissist? what's going on, uh, what's happening. And I heard really clear that you are not a narcissist. You're not that empty vessel narcissist that can't fill it up. You have, um, and tell me if this is wrong, uh, some programming that occurred as a result of being around them in order to succeed, have used you know some of those power trips um but you've done really well at lessening those is that true i'm not what you, i'm not sure what you mean by the first part the second part as far as like detangling myself and eliminating those tools that i had to use when i was in those situations is that what you're asking yeah as a woman myself in business i spent 10 years of my early adult life in uh management and i had to you know be bring out my masculine side a lot more i had to use mm -hmm. some of the negative stereotypes of what it's to be what you have to be like in order to be a right. powerful person mm -hmm. and a powerful woman and i had to deprogram myself from that and I heard that some of the experiences that you've got or had mm -hmm. are because of, you know, having to needing, needing to deprogram yourself. Is that right? I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So keep doing that because you are incredibly powerful and, uh, you know, that's really, really important to accept your power and uh, stand in your own yin and yang and be balanced in that and know that sometimes we've got to be more yang and sometimes more yin and uh, understanding that. Um, as far as your question about uh, losing your your train of thought when you're trying to give a talk and it's something you know really well, I heard that um, somewhere along the line in your experiences, you've lost your trust in your own intuitive ability 
and um, that so it's again your your root chakra and your sacral chakra your solar plexus is pretty strong but um, it's whether it's safe and whether you can be creative in your root chakra and your sacral chakra and um, and that's impeding your voice and being able to speak your truth and and just speak because you need that creativity from the sacral chakra to be able to stand up there and and do the speaking and have your voice and you need the balance and the grounding and the safety that comes from the root chakra so i'd encourage you to work on that and i love all of the advice that you've gotten it will really help i mean what what uh gaia gaia was saying uh and that gift that she gave you in that uh guided meditation was wonderful so just keep doing that and trusting yourself and knowing that you can what i heard is that when you were talking about was it north carolina or south carolina north carolina North Carolina was that then you started to doubt your intuition. Okay, I moved here and started to doubt it. And then you moved up here and now you're starting to doubt it even more. That's where your intuition is out of whack. You have fantastic intuition. You're not, you are an intuitive person. Am I correct? Very intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you've got to do that healing work to step into that knowing and, and not let go of feeling afraid and unsafe to be the whole complete person you are and to step in that creativity and to just keep telling your angels you have a lot of angels around you by the way and you have to ask for their help but just ask them to send you people who respect you honor you and recognize your your uh, brilliance and the angels will they'll rush to do that for you and make a lofty question for yourself about the why it's okay. creating miracles in my life when i once i learned to do that thank you very much uh-huh thanks sandra now i want to read what the shift witch wrote she had to leave and left a message for us to read out loud um she's typing here but she has to go soon something that can help deeply is connecting to your breath as soon as that tension enters us, our breath is the first thing to change. We hold our breath or breathe more shallowly. Deepening the breath consciously when, really, when we really feel like holding and stuffing it down can help allow those emotions to move in the moment rather than building to the point that we explode. Not that there's anything wrong with feeling the explosiveness either. Sit and breathe into those feelings and search where you feel them in your body to help lead to healing via the chakras, healing the chakras. Also, guys, exercise with finding the correct word would be wonderful to do whenever you need it. Sorry, I had to go. Wish you the best. You are a powerful and luminous being. Embrace that. Thank you, Shift Witch. Yeah, lovely. Thank you all. I appreciate I just, it. I have a few other things I want to add. I know we're, if, does anyone have to leave right now? Because I want to give you a chance to, if you need to share your contact info. It just, do you, Sandra, you have a tiny little bit more time, is what you're saying? Got to leave soon, but I don't have anything to add. Okay. Did you want to share your contact info? And you can go, and then I can share the few other pieces of things afterwards. Go ahead, if that. Yeah, my contact info is sandrajeffs.com, and um, it has all of the healing modalities that I do, and a whole bunch of. Um, I also have a book on uh, healing from abuse, and it has uh, a lot of uh, metaphysical healing products. I work a lot with rocks and crystals and things. So sandrajeffs.com. Great, and then I'll read Jamie's information, the shift wishes information and Henry's information too in a few minutes. Um, Lori and Gaia, are you here still for a few more minutes or do you have to take off shortly? I will give you a chance to share. Lori, are you okay too? For a few more minutes? Okay, I'm going to imagine that Lori is. So the few other things I wanted to say are, oh goodness. Um, oh. So I work with a model of four types of fear. And so when you, when you go faint uh -huh, and you, you can't think, you're not connected in your body typically, um, right? That comes from fear, right? So chances are there's something in the situation that triggered something from the past. So one of the body antidotes for faint, there are a couple of them I'll show you. 
Um, and I, I love, by the way, the shift witches um, suggestions kind of connect in with that. Lori, I just want to check you're here. Are you okay to stay for a few more minutes or did you need to? Okay, great. So an antidote to faint, the way I like to do it is, because like when I faint, um, I get kind of floaty spacey. And so this grounds me back in my body. And I put my arms together. So pulling in and pushing out like this and switch and go the other direction too. So this does a combination of getting like blood to the upper part of my body, so more blood in my head. And then it's also like a hold, a really firm hold for me, like a hug. So I have it like, I'm safe, I'm not alone. And you can do it in a really small way when you're in public too. So it can be like below the table, putting your fingers together, pulling in and pushing out with your fingers. And so you wanna have your arms kind of in this rounded kind of space. So it does something similar, okay. So to overlap your fingers as much as feels good to you. So this is my favorite. And then another one that uh, my teacher used that my friend likes, my friend's faint is like, Whoa, and she just slumps. So for her, it's helpful. It's like reaching into a pot of love and touching herself and bringing some of the love to her. And you can do this kind of strongly too. I just, my way of my arms, the strength is much better. So you can bring the love to you also. So those are two forms that are antidotes to faint. Um, the other thing is if you're very aware that you're thinking about something from the past or the future that's not right here, right now. Um, so that would be a flea fear. You can get into a sumo position. So I'm crouching like a sumo wrestler, right? And so if you're sitting again on a video call or you're with people in public, push your legs into the ground. So it tense the muscles in your legs. So you wanna ground yourself here right now instead of floating out wherever you are. And you can do these things together. You can do sumo, right? And do these antidotes at the same time. Yeah, so as soon as you notice that you're in having it come up in the moment and all those things, chances are they will shift your breath and things like that. So all these things con connected. The other thing is um, thinking about the situations that have happened that aren't resolved yet. You know, they may resolve, they may not resolve. Feeling your anger is so helpful. Um, one of the things that I did in healing all this stuff, it's um, I don't necessarily do it pr properly, but it's similar to lion's pose in yoga. So it's a form of lion's pose. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's um, opening your mouth, move your tongue down towards your chin. And um, you do this, you wanna open your vocal cords. I like to do this in the shower because I totally felt like I was gonna lose my stomach. Um, and you think about the things that you have had happen that you have not wanted, like things you've essentially had to swallow that you did not want. Right? So it's, it's purging it out of you, right? So getting you more connected to your power. Okay. So that's a good thing. Um, I, uh, when I felt safe enough and I knew that I would stay in my body, I also used to just scream with my throat open, really, ah, no, when I was driving on the freeway, no one could hear me. You can also put a towel over a thick towel over your mouth and you just want to be careful to hold your vocal cords, your throat open to protect your vocal cords. Um, and then I also want to mention, um, and there's a, I've shown this before with a washcloth. You can get a thin washcloth, twist a corner. Um, stand try to take off, I think. Yeah, twist a corner, put it in your mouth, um, your teeth, but just um, make sure it's not in the front part of your teeth. Bite down and pull forward. You do the same thing. Ah! Thinking about the things from the past or the recent past, the old past, the recent past, that you have not wanted, that you don't want, that are not fair and are not okay. Go ahead, Guy, if you want to jump in and say something. Yeah, if you do that sumo wrestling thing with your lower body, and extend your arms outward with both your fists clenched and you do that tongue thing, that's actually a Maori mm -hmm. uh, warrior pose. And uh, it, it gets your energy. And not only can, so one way you can use it is to purge. The other way you can use it is like standing in the warrior pose with your hands on your hips for five minutes. You can take 30 seconds of, your tongue way out and and let your enemies know you're after them mm -hmm. yeah so totally getting you in your power and get then, you yeah. get you i mean you know you might have to go to the ladies room in order to do this before these guys although I, they probably deserve to have it done to them right there on the boardroom <laughs> but yep. you know here in the pacific northwest where just a shade more expressive than someone in England. I had a, I had a British friend who literally got a compound fracture skiing. And when the ski patrol came up to them said, 
I'm having a tad of a problem. Yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> right. We're really, so. And, and then another thing I'll mention too, is I mentioned, right, my grandmother being a narcissist and these other people, narcissistic continuum, other people that have shown up in my life. I had a client for several years that I knew was narcissistic. I watched her behave this way with other people, or at least, you know, I, I saw the behavior. I chose to keep working for her. And sure enough, one day got turned on me, right? So I was the person that got blamed for something. Um, so we don't work together anymore. So I knew at least had conscious awareness that I was in this situation that when I've had it happen and I don't realize the thing that I do to empower myself, not to blame myself, to empower myself is to look back, feel back over the history with that person. And where did I have glitches? Where did I have intuitions and had awareness in my body, my mind? Where did I not listen as a way of coming back to trust my own experience so that I can respond differently if something happens in the future. And because of part of my wounding, I may be selecting the people that are more likely to behave in that way. And how can I be in my power in those situations as I go forward? Um, my my ex-husband's definition of my being an incredibly selfish person was I wouldn't do things his way. And believe it or not, it took me 28 years to figure out that that was nuts. But narcissists are really good. They are. They are. That was such a narcissistic statement. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. And I say, and just in general, empowering you, if you, if there's music, any music that you love from any point in your life that had you feel um, joyful and in your power and that you love to sing to, um, do that. Just as a way of opening right your throat. Yeah. So feeling the joy as you're expressing. Those are all things that can support you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, great. Lori or Gaia, yeah, anything else you want to share too? Because we around all the different things. I think it's getting to be about the time for you to make that decision you've been putting off about what choice you made before you were born for your life you should be doing. You're, you're getting up to the point where you've got the skills to do it now. And um, I, I'm getting a leading that if you keep putting it off, you're going to, it's going to slide through your fingers like sand. So put your good big girl panties on and go for it because it's going to be great. It's, it's really good for the rest of us. We really, really need you out there. Okay. And other people are appreciating the tips. I want to encourage you to still offer your services. Your services are valuable. You can make products if you want. Don't have them turn you in another direction. Yeah. And no, I think you're going to be amazing, Lisa. I'm going to say, and other people are sharing appreciation for the different tips and things that we've been sharing too. So I just want all of you to know. Okay. So thank you, Lisa, for asking, right? being of service to many people. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, let's see. So we've come to the end of our panel today. We're going to have the practitioners that are left share their contact info in a second. I want to say too that we've got a panel tomorrow, um, Monday, September 20, um, from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Pacific time on working with the Fae and the Elementals at the Autumnal Equinox. We are very close to the Equinox. And then on September 30, we have a panel on shadow play. So being with our shadows, facing our shadows. Friday, October 1, we have a uh, metaphysics and intuition practice circle. So this is if you have something you're already practicing, it could be informal, it could be a hobby, it could be just learning. This is an opportunity to practice on each other. We'll have practitioners that help hold the space and guide that. You'll be working with your peers. And then on Saturday, October 2, we have an anything and everything training panel. So if you are um, opening to sharing with people in a public forum, you want to get experience being on stage or you're sharing a new modality and want to practice with that, it's a panel like this, but we support you from behind the scenes. Um, you pay a little bit to be on the panel and people pay half price to ask a question. We have a number of people signed up for that. We've got more space too. And we have others of those scheduled as well. Sunday, October 3, we have a panel on um, tarot, all things tarot. tarot. Um, we're gonna have two of those. We're also gonna schedule one on December 1 because we've had such demand from the practitioners to offer this. I'm really excited. So we're gonna have, I think like eight practitioners at that's one of their specialties. So I will help 
uh, host that and I will not be, probably be answering questions because I don't do that. And we've got lots more events coming to at MimiFairs.com or if you go to jointhefair.com or joinmimionline.com, whatever you use to find us here and scroll down the page, you'll see all the upcoming panels. Yeah, thank you for your appreciations for today. Well, so Lori and Gaia, go ahead and share your, um, share again your names, your modalities and your contact info so people that watch the video later can find you. Hi, my name is Lori, and my business is Lori's Angelic Guidance and Intuitive Healing on Facebook. Lori, Insta Lori, it's Lori Psychic Healer on Instagram. And I also have a group, um, Tears and Healing from Narcissistic Wounds and Abuse on Facebook. And it's T dot, it's all capital letters because it stands for Together Everyone Achieves Real Success. And so you can get a hold of me there, or my email is um, Jezana, J E Z A N N A, at telus.net. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, Lori. Gaia? Hi. Um, I actually work for donation um, because I do this because it's my calling and not because I'm old enough that I have some funds coming in so I, it doesn't have to be my job. Um, I'm at Gaia.Hawken, H-A-W-K-I-N, no S. So to be G-A-I-A dot Hawken, H-A-W-K-I-N, no S, at Mac, M-A-C, dot com. And I work mostly on FaceTime. I've been known to work on the regular telephone when necessary. And... Um, I'm certainly open to work with people uh, setting something up where you pay for the getting rid of the problem and then however many sessions it takes, that's what you get until we get the problem solved. So it's a little bit different than most people's approach. It's great. Thanks so much, Gaia. And I put the information in the chat too. Yeah, about, you did. You were fabulous. Yeah, I got all the practitioners info in there and I'll call out the two uh, few practitioners that have already left. And also if you're willing to fill out um, uh, willing to fill out a feedback form to give us feedback on the panel today and give us your email, we'll put you in a drawing for a free 30 minute session with one of us of your choice. So thanks so much for doing that. That allows us to be in contact with you about all the other things we have coming up. So we also today had Henry India Holden. They offer spiritual direction, life coaching, and um, tarot guidance. HenryIndiaHolden.com, Henry at HenryHello.com, and 206-790-2331 is how you reach them. And they're special for those of you that are here today. Or if you haven't heard this by then, there's an online um, tarot class starting October 9, goes also the 16th, 23rd, and 30th. Um, there's a sign-up link that is in the chat, and also sessions are available for $30 for 30 minutes, $50 for 50 minutes, and they're giving a talk for those of you that are here tonight hearing this. They're giving a talk tomorrow evening at BEPC, so the information is at BEPCweb.org. It's $6 for the talk, or you can become a member um, for $21, and you'll get to go to the November meeting presentation, and the December, it's a party where you get readings and healings included all in that 21, and you get membership for all of next year. For, so their monthly meetings and there's a party in December and yeah. So it's a great organization to be part of. It's a nonprofit organization. I help run it. All right, sweet. And then I'm Lorelai Shmaya. I'm an intuitive eye reader. Oh, I didn't say Sandra Jeffs. She already shared her information. That's great. Thank you, Sandra, for being here. I'm Lorelai Shmaya. I'm an intuitive eye reader and a body psychology coach. Thank you so much for being here. My info is at lorelaishmaya.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-L-I. S-H-I-M-A-Y-O.com. Find out all the rest of what I do from that, from that link. Thank you everyone so much for being here. This big topic, empowering each other. Um, yeah, great to be connected in community and, and feel our power and our, our siblings, right? That are our peers that are here with us on this journey. All right. So thank you again. And um, I look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow at our panel for working with the Fae. Take care, everyone. Get the recording on.